I want to see the Alamo. Believe me, I want to see the Alamo. And I love New Orleans. I will always have Vegas. <laughs> Give my regards to Buffalo. So how was Hawaii, man? We're going to lose you to the Spuds Day? I think I got over somewhere between Grand Junction and Denver. Hey, old man. San Francisco, huh? Hey guys, go to New York. Have a great time. Minneapolis? 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 Mom, this is Beverly Hills. You gotta be a little glamorous. Welcome to LA. Hello, Nano Two One O Super Fans. Jason Priestley here. Just want to welcome you to Nano Two One O's Thirty First Anniversary Podcast. Thirty One years since the show premiered on October Fourth, nineteen ninety. I can't believe it's been thirty one years. God knows I haven't aged. Seriously, we made the show a long time ago. We made a lot of great memories. We made a lot of mischief, but we also made television history. We appreciate you guys being there then. We appreciate you guys being here now. We love you guys. Enjoy the show. Well, here we are. Wow. Eric has been going. Wow. I have heard the family. Wow. Oh, Jason Priestley, okay. too. Wow. Jason. Right on. Yeah. Welcome to us. From the state of Tennessee, we should say. That's right. Of course. That's I right. Mean, that, that's, that was amazing. This is the first week we're not asking where, what states are we trying to get? Whatever we got, we've got, and whatever we don't, we don't. And it is it, it is what it is. Or well, we had, and they were elusive, and they slipped through our grasp. We did, we did pretty good, though. I, I think we, we should, should give be. ourselves credit. I um, want to, right off the top, let me give credit to my three compatriots here. I, I brought in a couple of friends I knew in the Western United States, but they did the heavy lifting, and uh, thank you for doing that. Amazing. Of course. And hey, thanks to Todd for that great opening. I think we can all agree that was fantastic. Larry Mullen runs and a very the original great theme. The original theme, we should also say, with the composer Brian Armand, is uh, very stirring and uh, evocative of the show. I think it's kind of cool. Rod, Larry Mullen runs a very tight ship, and he was, him and Todd worked on that and making sure that the, those clips all looked good and all that stuff. Thank you, Larry Mullen. This is, you know, you are the Vince McMahon of America's zip code. <laughs> It's the first time you've ever been instead of BKM, I'm LDM, right? That's right. Um, yeah, but we I mean, didn't have any heels. We have no heels. <laughs> all baby faces, all baby faces, all That's the time. Right. So there's going to be lots of surprises and tons of fun of things happening out. Mel Melanie and I did a pre-show. Melanie, I want to shout this person, Crystal Hayes put Claire Arnold 90210 so she wins a free t-shirt. So just DM me on the account and we will get that to you. And she also spelled Claire right, so that was really great. All right, All right. guys, this is going to be a very uh, we, we should we should hop in, right? I mean, let's hop might... in. Let's bring on our first region yeah, which is North. Although well, let me before we go. Oh, here we, we go. go. Melody, the stingers too. Remember Melody, we have to play stingers. Oh, we before... have stingers. We have stingers. stingers. Before we do, I just want to know just to get it out of the way. So I got inspired uh, a couple of days ago to think about that I would make a toast in every region. So that's going to be happening. I just want anyone who's here now to know that when the group comes in, expect me to do a real quick toast. Amazing. Okay, so wow. there's going to be toast. There's going to be drinking. There's going to be a lot of fun. Well, Let's in. get in to the Northeast. That's where we're traveling to first. Yes, Melanie? Yes, sir. Play it. So how was Boston? Ate a lot of lobster. I know you, Walt. You had a blast in Boston last so, summer. I'm a big fan of Boston. Andre came all the way from New Haven. Ah, yeah. fellow homeboy. You know, I always forget that you were a Yaley. Yep, been four years in New Haven. Lived to tell about it, too. Okay, I changed my mind. You don't have to shave it off. <laughs> now you tell me. No, actually, it's a good look for you. It goes perfectly with your split personality. Funny. 
Okay, I don't know what Todd did there, but uh, there we have it. We are here in the Northeast. That's right. Uh, okay, this is exciting. Um, lots Hi, of everybody. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thanks for being here. In terms of the beer that I'm giving you a toast to the Northeast, I lived in Cambridge, Massachusetts for two years. I love seeing the, uh, the leaves turn, and I love New England. So I got an honor. I got a Samuel Adams Boston Lager. Cheers. Cheers. Um, Cheers. And I'm from Cheers. Massachusetts, so Mass in the house. Cheers. And I'm also half of the season uh, in Massachusetts on Martha's Vineyard. All right. Look, so, hey, to you guys, uh, someone wanted to shout you out, right? We have a we have a shout out here oh, for yeah. the Northeast. That's right. Oh, Do it up. Hey, everybody. Uh, Christina Lee's here. If you are in the 9210 fans, and I assume you are, you probably recognize me as the woman that played Emily Valentine, back in the day, 30 years ago, more than 30 years ago. Um, and so I want to thank you guys for your continued loyalty. Uh, I don't know if you know this, I'm a New England girl myself, uh, and I wanted to send a few shout outs to people from my part of the country, the Yankees out there. I want to say thank you to Allison Fucci of Newton. I'm actually from Roslindale, Massachusetts. It's right there by Newton. You must know Rosie well. I grew up on Roslindale Avenue in Roslindale. Uh, and my parents live in Jamaica Plain still. Um, and who else? Uh, Kathleen from Connecticut. Jen from New Hampshire. Cynthia from Vermont. Kim from Rhode Island. And not last but not least, Ruby from Maine. I saved you uh, for last, Ruby. Ruby, easy for me to say. Because um, I wrote a novel called bathing and the single girl and the heroine the protagonist in the book her name is ruby so anyway thanks again uh and yeah cheers <laughs> there you go christine oh, elise cheers. We, lost yes. we had jen here didn't we no what happened there we lost somebody did we lose somebody we did we okay. lost new hampshire Let let's, see. Hold on. let's <laughs> just jump right into this um okay. she's back you saw the Christina Lee shouted you out. I don't know if you if you caught that. Jen, yes. Oh, okay. Yes, Let's... yes, I did. Thank you. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> and Allison, I just want to say you had the you when when you get all the Boston references and she was there, you were really rocking. <laughs> <laughs> Super proud. Yeah. Okay, let's go around the room and find out what watching 90210 means to each of you and watching it and all of that. I feel we should start with Kathleen because I just <laughs> like that name a lot for some reason. <laughs> I wonder why that could be, Pete. <laughs> all right, go ahead, uh, Kathleen. Uh, why don't you walk us into your 90210 experience? Yeah. So I had parents who were super strict about TV growing up. So 90210 is something I had to kind of keep on the DL. Um, I would sneak downstairs after they went to bed. Luckily, they went to bed early um, and tune in to see the gang. Um, I started watching it in middle school. Um, and that was a time when I really didn't feel like I had any real friends, but I felt like the gang were my friends um, and they were four years ahead of me. So I felt like as a middle school student, I had a glimpse of what high school was going to be like and then what college was going to be like um, in the future as they kind of progress through things. So that was really neat. Um, and obviously, as a person who was born and raised in Connecticut, I appreciated the tie in um, that 90210 did so frequently to our most esteemed educational institution, Yale University. <laughs> yes. Um, my dad's a Yale professor. Um, so I've been to campus many times. I would always ask him if he ever ran into Jesse Vasquez, um, you know, <laughs> teaching a class anywhere. Um, but he would say no. So I don't know. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. Well, I, I forgot. I always Stanford. Stanford for the Bulldogs. Unless they're playing the Quakers, where my two of my kids went to school. Yeah. Fair, fair. You know, when, I worked for the, when I worked for the WWE, I lived in Stanford, Connecticut. Oh, okay. You see, so. you see the WWE flag from the freeway when you, when you go by. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's move on to Kim B. We have a lot of people to get to. And uh, Charles and Larry, as you see fit, you can respond to things if you need to. So, uh, Kim B., go ahead. Tell us your story. So uh, similar to Kathleen, I started watching it in middle school and I could relate to the characters. Um, I as well kind of felt like an outcast and felt like they were my friends. Um, I would watch it with my mom on Wednesday nights. That was like our special time. So it always gives me really good memories of that. 
And every night I watch it before I go to bed, have Pluto on. It's great. Mm. Um, oh, nice. Love Pluto. Love Pluto. Yes, I love Pluto. Um, so, yeah. Somebody Thank you just for giving me so many good about things. Pluto at Disney World. But no, we're talking yeah. about a network. <laughs> yeah. Pluto TV, get the app. It plays uh, Beverly Hills 90210. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yes. Uh, just question. I'm curious both for you and, and Kim. What in, in, in the others who go on and talk about them, I don't know what if you could give a year date or something just to you get more context. When did how old were you? Where, where was the show when when you were in middle school and started? I watching? was I probably started watching it 95, 96. Whoa. So towards the Gosh. middle of the show. Um, but I have gone back and watched all of the episodes multiple times. Yeah, um, thank you. Thank you. And we all have. Yeah. yeah. What, what I've been in since the beginning. Yeah, since oh, okay. since it started. Yeah, I was oh, in sixth grade nice. when it premiered, and I was in from hooked from day one. First give you a first um virtual okay ruby t black tell us what's up hi guys hey guys thanks for having me first of all um i will say is i had a very unconventional growing up um i lived with a single mother who went to work in the evenings and i would get out of bed um when i sleeping and I would turn on 90210 um, along with some probably other inappropriate other inappropriate things I should have been watching um, and then I actually unfortunately went into foster care and some of my foster families would let me watch it and others wouldn't um, so it was definitely a treat and I would sneak it so I really kind of like the other two felt like these people were my friends. Um, I think I really idolized Tori Spelling, um, both on the show and off the show of just living this really magical life, um, like almost looked like Cinderella to me. Um, so I really kind of had her as like an icon, I guess, in a sense of making my life better than what it was or what it could have been. Um, and now very successful in my life um, and, you know, have gone back just like everybody else and has watched it multiple times and have the box set and thoroughly enjoy watching it and learning stuff each time that you go back and watch it. Absolutely. Awesome. Where in Maine were you from? Where, where, where were you from? What town? Was so, um, in southern Maine, um, Sanford, Springville area. So, like twenty-five minutes from Kennebunkport. Ah, oh, the bush gotcha. cool. Do you um? Yep. Do you still live in Maine? Um, I do not. I live in upstate New York now, but my um, my parents, who eventually adopted me when I was actually in college, live there. So I'll be heading oh, there very in a nice. weeks. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. What, what town? What town in upstate New York? Um, Penfield. So it's a Penfield. suburb of Rochester. Oh yeah, I was gonna say it's close to the uh, to the uh, Finger yeah. Lakes. Yeah. So know, upstate anyway. Western New York, yes. Right. This is a sh you know that this is an, uh, a, a, a three hour special about geography. <laughs> yes. yes, I do. Exactly. State sure capitals. We, we want to have the zip codes. You know, oh, Ruby, Martin. then favorite character Donna Martin. Donna Martin, all the way. Let Donna Martin graduate. Uh, Kim B, favorite character. I'd have to say Kelly. Okay, fair enough. And and Kathleen, I really hope you say Claire. Uh, <laughs> I I love Claire and obviously Team Brenda. I'm a brunette. Okay, there you go. Yes, I'm also uh, a Claire. Okay, so Allison, uh, why don't you tell us your story? Hi, um, thank you for having me on. I was actually nine when I started watching the show, so I think I was in fourth grade. I was a little bit on the younger side, and I started watching from day one as well. Um, and my dad would actually watch with me a lot of the times. He was very progressive and believed in having open dialogues. So the show helped a lot with that. So we would watch it together. And it was always very interesting. I was a little bit ahead of it than my friends. My friends started to watch it in middle school. So my dad and I <laughs> would right. chat about the show. And I was, uh, I'm Team Kelly. And I also equally love Andrea. Okay. And, we all agree uh, there. I, yeah, I just, I, I always wanted to be a reporter, and I thought Andrea was the coolest. And I had talked about this on your Instagram the other day, thanking you guys for her character, uh, because she was very inspiring. I went on to be the editor of my college newspaper because because of Andrea. Wow, that's, that's awesome. awesome. And her influence. So. Well, well, you're in uh, there. You are in the Boston area. Did you go to school in in the Boston area? I did. I. Actually, suburb of Boston. I went to school in Milton, Mass, called Curry yeah. College. Oh yeah, so, Curry. About forty-five minutes oh, no, away no. from 
thoughts and yeah, yeah. Oh, very cool. Cool. getting homesick now somebody just said <laughs> something to you larry that they they were devastated over the loss the yankees lost yesterday we no. were not so no. okay i just i got it we, we know this i just want to tell you that i i had this with my cohorts here i just want to know you know this is a baseball oriented show this <laughs> Somehow, is a big yeah. night for dodger fans and this is the only thing that kept me from being in chavez ravine which I do right. almost, I've been doing since 1959, since the Dodgers have been in the postseason. But zip code only becomes 31 one time. But there'll be no talking about baseball, baseball. Right. Dodger baseball at least, until yeah. I'm going to take a little break in the middle of the show. And, and I, I can't and wait that, you know, and, and check and see what's going on. Okay. All right. Let's get to uh, Jen from New Hampshire. I'm excited to hear your story of getting into uh, 90210. Hello, Jen. Hi. So I was like Allison, and I realized today how young I was when I started watching it at nine years old. <laughs> and my first memory was the spring dance episode. And I remember being at my grandmother's house, and we weren't allowed to watch it, my sister and I, but then calling home to check in. And my sister was watching it, and she was younger than me, and I was so upset. And I remember sneaking it in my grandmother's kitchen. Mm. So that's just how young I was, and I've watched it right along ever since. I used to wow. VHS it every week to still have it and watch it the next week. Even still now, after listening to your podcast, I've started re-watching it on Hulu just to keep up and watch the episodes you guys are talking about and find new stuff about it. That's really great. Did That's your friends great. watch you doing that? friends as well. Oh, yep. Yep. I remember in middle school and high school, we'd always talk about that. Yep. Did any of you guys have watch parties where your friends would come over and you'd all watch it together every week? Yes. No, I maybe. Just, Allison, yeah. maybe. Uh, uh, I don't know. Specifically I the, finale. the finale. Yep. For yeah. finales, I had people over for sure. Like the series all, finale, yeah. I had a big one. Nice. While we have you here, is there anything that you guys want to ask Chuck and Larry about any of the shows or episodes while you're sitting here and uh, and have this opportunity? Allison, looks like you have something you want to pop out with. No, I just okay. I know okay. I have a million questions, but I can't think of one right now. <laughs> Okay. I have a question, if that's okay. Of course, sure. Kathy, whatever you want. Okay, so of all the colleges, I mean, there's Ivy League schools all over, you know, the Northeast. Why did you decide on Yale to be such a point of focus? Because Connecticut is really honored by that, so. Well, you know, I lived in Cambridge, so there was no way in the world I was going to pick Harvard, especially <laughs> since I was going to BU at the time. And, uh, and and my friends who were at Harvard just stopped knowing me, you know. So uh, yeah. <laughs> true that I worked for at BU, them. I worked for WBUR. I did local news and and re and film reviews and did some got an all um, all pub national public radio. So it was you know I have you know so it wasn't going to be Harvard for sure. And uh, and I didn't know how wonderful the University of Pennsylvania was because I didn't know uh, my uh, kids were, were young at that point. In fact, my youngest son Avery was born uh while we in the first season oh wow okay i hope carol potter isn't watching because she is a harvard alumna so she, you know, <laughs> she might be. we had a lot of smarty pants on this show believe me uh but yeah that jessica klein who would have been with us today but uh, fortunately has a nasty cold get better jess she's on the uh, il she, again she was at Je jess jessica klein and, and chip both went to harvard jessica. and chip uh, okay yeah, of course you know yeah. that's right Okay, and thank you. Have any other questions here for Charles or Larry about anything? Go ahead, Allison. I do now. Did you know when you were writing the show how influential? Like, did you know you had magic, or do you look back and go, "Wow, that was amazing"? Or did you know it at the time? Did you feel like there was something special about the show that we'd be talking about all these years later? Well, I can't wait to hear Chuck's answer on this. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, not, not, not only after, you know, the first 12 was just about trying. And I, I think I've told this before that in my office, post-its were brand new and they gave us post-its and I put one up behind me and I'd look at it all the time when I'd swivel around to take the phone. So my staff couldn't hear what I said, was saying, and it said DFU, which was meant, stood for don't fuck up. <laughs> because I figure this show is going to get canceled in the first 12. And as long as I'm not blamed, someone may hire me again. 
Right. Now, the irony, of course, is is that it goes to 143 and nobody hires me again. But that I didn't know that when I was back in the first 12. But the but the answer is only when we got out of the Gulf War and we started going up and they said, you're doing summer episodes that we knew. Oh, my. We're we're on the wave. Uh, get out your surfboard and ride. You know. Yeah. How about for you, Larry? You know, I, I came in college and, I, and the show was popular, but I think you knew it was something special because even then without social media, there was a buzz of fans. We felt that fans were really watching it, and we had to watch our stuff because they knew more about the show than we did. We had to make That's sure true. that we were, we were taking them in the right place and, and, and also understand in a way what they wanted and, and what they wanted from the character, you know, like, like the David and Donna. And, 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 sure. So, yeah, it, it, we knew that, but never this long to, to, to have gone back. No, this is, so we, we thank you all for that because, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, that, it's really, really we salute great you. And, and we love Chuck you. Chuck and I and everybody else. And, Larry, we are live, but so I have to check your mic settings. I think you might not be plugged into your actual mic. I think you might just be computer, um, but just just to be aware. Of that. Okay, any other questions for? It's a high tech operation here. You can see that. <laughs> I just went, you know nine hundred two one hundred two. Yeah, I got it. As, as Larry knows this, we were the first show that Eric Spelling used computers. Computers have been a standard in the business since about 1984-85. We started in 1990. So we always, uh, was always a half step back in, in technology, and Pete is carrying on that tradition. Good. Yeah. I mean, uh, this show means so much to so many, and I'm happy to be a small part of this. All right. We are going to say goodbye to this group and panel. We're going to play an ad for our store. And then we're going to prepare, hopefully, uh, with the next one. Well, well, well. When was the last time you checked out the Beverly Hills 90210 Show Shop? Because now it's loaded with so much more stuff. Did you ever want to join the gang at CU? Because now you can wear your official CU t-shirt. Or want to get into the fun with America zip code? Represent with this cool swag. Or maybe you have an invite to the Peach Pit after dark and need the coolest shirt ever. We have loaded the store with so much more. So don't be a squeeze. Head over to Beverly Hills 90210 showshop.com for all the latest goods. Well, then I guess I'll see you too when I get back from Washington. Here you are in Washington, D.C. Pennsylvania. That's right, Beaver Falls High School. Beaver Falls sounds beautiful and all. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, hello. Is this New York City? Yes, it is. I can't believe I have to go back to the city in three days. Why is it all New Yorkers refer to New York as the city, as if there are no other cities in the world? Because there isn't. Valerie just moved here from Buffalo. How cool can she be? She's from Buffalo. You know, bud, I don't think I gave Buffalo all the credit that it deserves. All right, we're going to move on. And uh, hello, we have the next group. Um, yes, we've got everybody but Delaware right now. All right, well, come on, Delaware, before we start. Hello, hello everybody. Beth and hello. Sir Jenny Lynn. Here's to you with Rolling Rock from Pennsylvania. That's great. I see Delaware. And Delaware yeah, just joined Delaware. us. Yes. Now, Melanie, There's if that role. other thing occurs, you know what you have to do, right? Yes, okay. copy that. Yep. And then here is this. Hi, it's Carol here. Just wanting to thank all the fans who've done such an amazing job keeping 90210 going all these years. And your loyalty and your devotion is totally admirable. And I want to include a special call out to Jenny Bennett from New York and Nicole from New Jersey and Trish from Pennsylvania, Sarah from Maryland, another Nicole from Delaware, and Lynn from Washington, D.C. Thank you all. 
And subbing in for Trish, see you snooze, you lose. Uh, it is is Beth. It's good to see you. How how are you? I'm good. How are you guys? I should also good shout out that you, my friend. Well, she was my sister's friend. I stole her. Nicole <laughs> on the bottom right is here with us. And hello, was, hello. It's good to see you. Um, you too. Yep. And Sarah and Jenny and Lynn. Let's start with Beth. Uh, since you're the, the last addition to join us here. Um, I know you're not originally from Pennsylvania, right? But you have been watching 90210 in Pennsylvania for a little bit here. So why don't you talk every, to me about Pretty much in every state I watch 90210. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I grew up in New Jersey, which you know, Pete, because we talked about that. But then I was in Philly for about seven years. And then I just moved um, from Philly last month to upstate New York, to Ithaca. Wow. Well, you got both of us then. Larry went to college in Ithaca and my kids, two of them went to college in West Philly. So there you go. That's right. Right. Because we talked about that um, early on one of the podcasts. And Larry, I downloaded your book and I just it's on my list to read it. And I will. Great. I just have Thanks not read so anything yet because I just started a new job here. So but I, I will absolutely uh, be reading that soon. It's a terrific novel. It has lots, yeah, lots of Ithaca ref references. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm thanks, excited. Bye, I'm excited. Um, okay, so let's move to Nicole, my friend uh, that I stole. Good to see you. Good, good to see you. <laughs> yeah, it's been a minute. I don't think we've talked. <laughs> yeah, just about. <laughs> uh, so why don't you tell me about your, I don't know that we've ever talked about this. We've talked about 90210 a bunch. Plenty, yes. Probably a bunch about Claire. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, why don't you tell me uh, your, I don't know that I've ever asked you how you got into 90210. I would never ask you that at a party. So <laughs> <laughs> I started watching when it first came out. So I was probably about 11 and it was something that my mom and I did every week together. So it was kind of like, that was our thing. We watched the show and then as I got a little bit older and it got a little bit more racy, <laughs> Uh, mom and I would not watch it together anymore, but I continue to watch it and I just have rewatched it. I countless amounts of times and uh, I could probably recite most of it right alongside you. <laughs> exactly. We can do, you know, we could, we can meet up and do like a, you know, a play by play scene. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I think ever since, ever since it first came out. So I was about 11 years old. When uh, Nicole and I would be at my sister's parties, we would walk into the other side of the room and everybody would think we were talking about what was happening at the party, but we were just talking about 90210. <laughs> we were. Or, or how something at the party reminded us something Brandon did. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it always, always came back to 90210. No matter where we were, what kind of party we were at, it, that's what it came to. Exactly. Um, and of course, shout out much to my wife. She was a part of all that too. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Love New Jersey. My father was born in Patterson, and and Larry uh, was born there too. I was born in Jersey. I was born in Teaneck. Okay, so I'm I'm from Paramus. I'm in Fairlawn now, so right in the same neighborhood. That's yeah, it. I mean I'm Bergen County. Yeah, I left Fairlawn. There when one I was of my five, closest yeah. friends was from and I moved to New York High School. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Dave Orchard, the, the man who who founded the NFL Network. Is oh the wow! Of your, it lived in, grew up in your town. I, had, I didn't even know that. That's yeah. awesome. All right, let's we let's move to Sarah. Hi, Maryland. hello, Maryland. Yeah. Welcome yes. in. Where in Maryland are you? Uh, I'm not in Maryland anymore. Okay. Um, where, where, where's your what you're saying? I grew up in I grew up in Laurel, Maryland, just outside of DC, oh. and uh, racetrack, yeah, and uh, yeah, <laughs> and um, went to University of Maryland. So I, I lived there <clears> uh, from five to twenty-five. So all my nine to two and zero years were in Maryland. So <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, I can go ahead and share my story yeah. if you like. Okay, yeah. great. I um I was 15 when the show premiered, and I started watching it right from the beginning. I think it just spread around my high school that this new show was on, and uh, so caught it right from the start. And I think that you know the brilliant move of those summer shows the next summer, I think, really locked me in. I remember I was trying out for the tennis team and would go play every day, but I'd watch, look at my watch, not my phone because those didn't exist. I was looking at my right. watch and had to be home in time for. 90210, and I was part of the class of 93, uh, just like the Peach Bit Gang. So yeah. um, there's about 20 of us who all agreed not to watch the 
prom episode, the Donna Marnock graduates episode or the graduation episode. And we got it on VHS and we all gathered together for a grad party and all watched all three of those episodes together for the first time. So it's very hard not to watch. And then you mean one after the other, you watched it. We, we did. We got you popcorn and pizza. And we just all sat. That's we great. I have pictures of us all sitting together in the basement. We had our That's class 93 cool. pins on and we were graduating <laughs> with uh, Brenda and Brendan. So it's always hard to say those two next to each other. Okay. Um, well, and then season. I continued to watch it, and um, and actually the season finale, uh, series finale in 2000 was right when I was finishing grad school. So once again, a lot of my cohort we had grown up watching it together. So we all gathered at my apartment and we all watched the series finale together. And I think one of the most poignant things for me now is I have a 15 year old daughter, and I was 15 when the show first aired, and I've gone back and watched a lot of those first couple seasons with her, and just. So many of the topics that you guys covered in those early episodes, um, being embarrassed by your parents, drinking, sex, uh, AIDS, grades, peer pressure, all of those things. And I remember when I watched that as a sophomore and a junior, that spoke to me and it was so serious. And that was much CTV and it's actually helped me communicate with my daughter in a different way because it's taken me back and putting me into the age she is now. And I also relate to Cindy Walsh a lot more than I did when I first watched it. Like, She's right, Brenda, yes. you need to be home by 10. So um but I think that's been really nice to have that two generation watch for myself first as a teenager, now as a parent watching with a teenager who's now that exact age. And, and it's Love 30 that. years ago, but the issues are exactly the same. It's interesting. Yep. We talk about that a lot here. It's surprising how many things we're still talking about all these years later. Surprising uh, and, some, and sometimes a little depressing. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Melanie, you're going to step out real quick. Yes, yeah, see you guys in a second. Okay, somebody wanted to say hello to all of you. Hi, you guys. <laughs> Hi. Oh my God. <laughs> hey, hey, Tori. Hi, hi, my friend. How What's going you? on, you guys? Oh, these are just oh, some fans God. that that are from all over the country. We have Nicole from New Jersey, Beth from Pennsylvania, Sarah's from Maryland, Lynn's from DC, Nicole is from Delaware, Jenny is from New York City. And Beth is from Pennsylvania. That's right. Oh, well, we have a no. And I'm Tori from Beverly Hills. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, Tori, I wanted to ask you, they, you just celebrated 31 years of this show. Is it crazy? Oh, my gosh. It, well, first of all, it's. I feel like I need to say, like, I started the show when I was six. <laughs> you have to keep saying that, right? You have to keep updating your age. Like, it's so crazy. But, I mean, we all, I know we all are feeling it. Like, I can't believe it was 31 years ago. But so grateful that everyone still loves it like it's so you guys i was in europe this last month and it's so insane because in europe they don't even like when they see me they don't even say tori like my name is non-existent it's just donna <laughs> and it was such a trip this like last week just like i got used to donna all over again because like right. at the hotel at any restaurant they'd be like donna bella and I was like, yeah italy right tori you in italy I was in Italy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it was just, I don't know, it made my heart so happy. It just, yeah, I love it. Thank you for all your support, you guys. Amazing. Anybody want to? Can you see my shirt? Nope. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, uh, after 31 years, I'd have to put on my glasses to see that. But... It it's it's just Donna Martin graduates. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone want, Nicole, do you want to say anything to Tori? Go ahead, Nicole from New Jersey. This uh, is amazing. I can't Delaware. believe it. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter's here now too. <laughs> uh, it's just amazing. I can't believe I'm talking to Donna Martin right now. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is amazing. Thank you, you Tori. It. I love you and your children are adorable. Thank you. How old's your kiddo? She's eight and a half. In, what's her name? Victoria. Victor Hi, Victoria. Do you go by Victoria? <laughs> oh, that's Vicky great. Or what is she? Uh, just, I prefer Victoria, but her friends call her Vicky. There you go. Uh, let's let Nicole and say hi to Tori. Go ahead. Oh Nicole. my God. Hi, Tori. Oh my gosh. This is like a dream come true for me because. We went to LA like two years ago and all my son wanted to find was YouTubers. And I said, all I wanted to find was Tori Spelling. <laughs> so I've, 
Oh my I god, can I get that guys. on a t shirt? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. No, okay, Lynn, let's get I've, I've read your books and I just you are my absolute favorite and I just want to say I love you. I love you too. I wish we had met. I'm sorry. Did you mean a YouTuber show? <laughs> <laughs> no. no. <laughs> uh, Lynn, let's go real quick. Tori doesn't have much time. Lynn, do you want to say something to Tori? I just want to say hi to Tori. Um, you were always my favorite on the show. I felt like I could relate to you kind of like a little bit of a goody goody two shoes, but wanted to have that rebellious uh, side <laughs> as well, but always kind of scared to do it. <laughs> um, I, you were just my favorite, and it is Thank so you. awesome to have you here with us tonight. Thank you so much for being here. All right, Sarah, go ahead. You're last. Thank you. Same. <laughs> Sarah, Tori, thank you so much for joining us. I was just sharing with them that I graduated from high school with the Peach Pit Gang in 93, and we all gathered together to watch the prom episode and graduation episode, and you were just tied to my high school experience. I just want to thank you for being an important part of that. Oh, thank you. Peter from Altadena wants to say, I love you, Tori, and thank you so much for uh, stopping here, and uh, we really appreciate you. What about, and Beth? Oh, oh, thank you, Larry. Hi, Tori. How are you? <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. I think you're amazing. I follow you on Instagram, so I've gotten to see all your story, all your fun times in Italy. Um, and thanks for thanks for popping in to say hi to us. Really, it's so great. Of great course. to see you. Happy well, anniversary. Yeah. Happy, happy anniversary to you guys. All right. Oh, we'll see we'll you soon. I'm Tori. sure. Okay. Bye bye. All right. Very cool. Melanie can come back in. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. There we All go. Right. That, was that, was that was a nice that surprise. Was. Oh, huh? Well, I take it back what I was saying about low tech. You know, <laughs> we, we switched it up. Melody went out to Oregon. Very yeah. impressive, Pete. But you know, a lot of know, moving parts. How it happened, Chuck? I'm just very lucky yeah. that it happened. All worked out. Streamyard was on. <laughs> I am a remember stage what manager happened too. last year. Uh, yeah, remember last year with Tori, you know, so um, oh, much better. it's it's you know, gotten it's, so much better in the last year. Tori just said, I texted me and said, I cut her you off. Can do a pre off. I'm going to do this first. We're actually going to do a preview where we're going to look back at our 30th anniversary show oh, and be snotty about show. it, you know, so That's it's right. going to be great. That's very cool. Yeah, okay. Italy, I'm not surprised. Is that pop? You know, we had that planet 90210 and the Italy oh, fan. Oh, Italy enormous, always and, uh, the They're most... ferocious and they, they continue to be this day. They follow the podcast. So shout out to Italy. And yes. Hey, uh, you know, I wanted to mention quick too. Lynn, you're a friend of Rory Carps, right? Correct. Thank you. I Thank sure you. am. Yes. Uh, from back in high school, back. He's a good family friend of ours. And uh, he's the okay. one that connected us to get into this. Yeah. Awesome. Well, explain, explain who Rory, Rory is, Carps. Melanie. Who is Rory? Um, Rory is a director. He's a friend of the show. Him and Pete uh, connected, and now I'm in touch with him. Pete, um, he did the 30 Under 30, correct? He directed 30 the for 30 30 on Rick Flair. And yes, we, we he's a, just a great friend. And he's, he's a good friend of Luke. Luke yes. He's a good friend of Luke Perry's, yes, and uh, he's been super helpful to us in this. Yes. In this we've process. had him on the show Thank before, you, and we will again soon. So, okay, Lynn, but do you still live in the district? So I actually live right outside in Virginia. Um, uh -huh. and like a lot of people here as well, I grew up in Pennsylvania with Rory. <laughs> um, so when I was watching 90210 back in the day, it was when I was living in Pennsylvania. Um, and just like some people mentioned earlier, I was a few years behind the Peach Pit gang. Um, so I always kind of felt like they were kind of preparing me for what was going to happen next. You know, I was in middle school when they were in high school and I was in high school when they were in college. So it was always a fun thing like, oh, here's what I'm going to experience when I'm in high school. And here's what I'm going to experience in the real world and work at the you know beach club and all of these fun things that they got to do, of course, which I didn't. But um, it was right. always fun to watch that. Um, and just kind of like growing up with, it felt like I was growing up with them. Yeah, um, I think that's where for all of us that started in the beginning of the show, it does definitely have that feeling that, you know, that's why we're so connected in a way, because we feel like we went to school together, even though we really didn't. <laughs> they had been out of school for a while. Right. Um, right. And now, like, yeah. as some of the people had mentioned, like, now as a parent, I think back to, like, I was watching all this stuff. Maybe I was, I mean, I was in middle school, but maybe some of the topics were a little questionable. But um, 
No, they weren't. No, I, they weren't. Oh, oh. It's just it's just we've gone backwards so many no, ways. They, they, they weren't. Just, they weren't. There's no necrophilia really or something. They well, were what, you know what? They were appropriate for its time. <laughs> and you know what? They were real. I mean, I think back one of the episodes that was kind of like the biggest impact was when Scott mm. died. And, you know, yeah. just yeah. something like gun safety that like no one had ever talked to me about. Right as a child, as a middle schooler, like that was never ever discussed. And then you see it on TV and it was such a big moment. And how could that happen? And, you know, David having this struggle of, I was trying, you know, I'm, I'm getting in with the popular crowd, but he was my sure. real friend. And, um, you know, those things were things that we were going to see in our future. And it was really just impactful. So many different moments on the show, but that's the one that really stood out to me. Very cool. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I don't know if we did this. We're going to talk to Nic the other Nicole in a second, but favorite characters, Beth? Oh, definitely. I'm a Brenda girl. Brenda and Dylan. Cool. Nicole? Oh, boy. My absolute favorite, um, Kelly. Wow. Okay. Yeah, Kelly. Sarah? Dylan. He's my favorite. Makes sense. Lynn? It was Tori. It was Donna. Um, I, I just felt like I could relate to her, but definitely Brenda was a close close second for me. Nicole N, favorite character, and then we're going to talk to you about your, your experience. Okay. Um, I feel like it changed a lot. Um, like in the beginning, I was I loved Kelly and Brenda, and then I loved, um, you know, some of the other characters that you won on. I feel like you related to them different times, but I always wanted to look and be Kelly Taylor. Wow. Very cool. Um, good stuff. What about your experience, Nicole N, on getting into this? Well, I mean, you just totally made my entire year by having Tori Spelling on here. So my life is made and I cannot wait to call my mom and tell her. But uh, I mean, it's just, you know, I remember I was 10 when the show first started. So I think that was fifth grade. And I watched from the beginning to the end. And I just remember watching and hoping like, oh my gosh, I hope this is what high school is like. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. And I want to wear the body suits and all that. And none of that ever worked for me like it did for them. But, you know, it's just relating to so much, you know, as it went on for right. so many well, years. It, still, it, going back and watching. You know, hearing all this, I, I just, you know, the fight, you know, my daughter was young. She was younger than you at the time. She was five. But I did at the same time, you know, like I, I was making the shows for girls. They were for, it really was about you know, young girl empowerment. And no, and I, without any idea that some of who I'd be talking to 31 years later were watching right. at 10 and 11 years old. Because you were who I made the TV show for, at least in those first oh. two seasons. Well, thank you. Most, no, most definitely. Yeah. You know, and uh, I mean, I was young yeah, enough to have a Jason Priestley you. doll. I had a Jason Priestley um, Barbie at one point, like for Christmas. So I was young. <laughs> uh, yeah, I bet. What happened to Jenny from New York? I don't know. She was having some audio issues. She uh, emailed me to say that she was she's having some tech diffs. So I don't oh, think she's going to pop Well, we up. love New well, York. Both, both Jessica Klein and Karen here. Rosen, originally from New York City, both went to school there. Can and I say uh, also, Yankees lost yesterday, and they also lost here um, because Jenny Bennett was not able to make – that. And this is a man who works for the Mets. So, of you know, course. you want to know the definition of shameless? <laughs> there he is. That's right. Yeah. Different kind of New York team. Uh, okay. Let me show this real quick um, for Sarah. Much love to Sarah from her little sister who remembers her 90210 dedication. Mm, that's and great. That's <laughs> um, and you know what really messed up this week? It's Trish. Because Trish could have been in this group, but she bailed on us. So... Guess what happened? Beth took yes, in yes, and yes. Tori Spelling was Lucky safe. me. Yep. Yes. Okay. Uh, Melanie, are we ready to move to the next group or where are we on that? I don't see, um, any, I don't see the, Mr., the other person. The Chuck other person or... is not back there well, yet. Can we just keep going to the next group? Or, yeah. I, we, um, I had kicked out Ann Fernando to make some room, but Hold Ann up. and. Yeah, if any of you guys have questions for Charles and Larry while we're here? Oh, well, yeah. We were. Please. I would I love to ask one. Um, <laughs> what made you guys decide to stop after 10 seasons? Because, I mean, like, some shows are 15 careful, years, yeah. and we would have loved to have more. Yeah. Larry, do you have answers to uh, that? I, look, I mean, neither – Chuck left after season five, uh, five, and I left after season seven. Uh, Chuck walked out. I was shown the door. So it's hard for me to talk about <laughs> eight, nine, and ten – 
um, you know, I think, you know, also shows have a certain value and the, the value gets diluted as you continue to create episodes in a lot of ways. Yeah. So there was no point. There was no, you know, it's all a business really to the, 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 the pencil pushers up there. And, and you know, at that point, even 10 years is probably too many years. Though now it's it's a different economic. So, it, but at that time, there wasn't like streaming or other afterlife like that. Well, you know, it it was you make a television deal with actors for seven seasons. Now that was all crazy and weird in our case because we made so many episodes that we got to seven past seven seasons when Larry was right in there in the beginning of season six, which is why. Luke Perry left when he did because he had, was contractually obligated to be there. What was it? 14 episodes, whatever it was, he was yeah. doing that, but they had to, you renegotiate, you do all that, but TV's broken down into seven seasons. And, uh, and I believe after the seventh season, uh, Aaron, who just loved this show and truthfully, Aaron kept this show going for Tori kept the show alive. And in season eight, and season nine, it took a, a dip ratings-wise, and season 10 was put together out of respect for him. So I think right. that's, that's kind of uh, broad strokes with me not being in the rooms of any of those moments. But nonetheless, I think it's safe to say that uh, everybody was surprised. No one knew if it was there was going to be a season 10 because Correct. season nine was okay. a little iffy ratings-wise. And as Larry started out so saying it, it's just a business thing all right i'm going to let nicole from new jersey ask her question and then we're going to move along uh to the next thing it is there charles the thing yes. thanks we are oh, ready okay. to go very good I have a quick question. Is there ever an episode that you guys discuss or that you're asked a question about that you really have to rack your brain and say what did, what happened on that episode is there anything that you don't remember from doing so many great episodes you want to go first, Larry? I was going to say most of them. When we're looking at them again, we're like, "Oh, we did that." Uh, no, I'm not. It's, no, it's, it's oh, Larry. You know, lost in Las Vegas. You totally remem didn't I remember. I didn't remember the storyline at all with the plot with Jason and the girl. Yeah, yeah uh, you know, it's been, that's what's been so terrific for us is looking back a second time at these things after so many years and uh, getting to appreciate and also laugh at some of the mistakes we made. But uh, really feeling pretty proud of everyone who was involved in the show. You know, it really gave us great pride in seeing and this podcast for us, you know, reuniting with everybody and all the creatives together. It's uh, it's just been a blast knowing the people. And, there. and really until there was a period of time for about 10 years from when I left the show, even more, maybe about 10, 15 years since I left the show, all that any episode represented to me was what was going on off camera at the time. Right. You know, I didn't, I didn't focus. We had done the creative. Well, okay, this is what we did, but the, you know, the, the conflicts, the joys, whatever it would be though, that's what you remember. So that's how I related it for it to it for a number of years until I met a few fans like you and realized Wait, I mean, it wasn't all for naught? Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> all right, we're going to say goodbye to Beth, uh, Nicole, Lynn, Sarah, and... Thank you, guys. Nicole. Thank you guys for being here. Nice to you. Thank you. Guys. Yeah. Thank you. It was awesome. It was really Keep fun. streaming. Keep streaming. You got it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, so now um, we're going to bring on our other guest, and then Larry, Melanie, and I are going to take a timeout. Our, this is our time out. Yes. <laughs> but uh, let's bring on that other guest so we can all say hello to him first. All right. Hello. Jim Egghouse. Hey. 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 Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. To Mr. Walsh. Well, sweet man. So uh, good to be here. 31 years. This is incredible, huh, man? What is it? I said 30. 31, 31 years now. And I'm still 35, which is <laughs> weird. You know what I mean? My doctor tells me not that I'm crazy, but as far as I'm concerned, I'm 35 years old. So you look good. Don't tell me different. Killing it. Killing it. Well, I'm going to do something different here. And yeah. uh, you expect we're all going to step Karen. out. Well, you're she going away? Me. Yeah. Chuck Everybody's in, going away. Don't me. Yeah, don't what? Me. Wait, Chuck. don't do that. Don't leave me. I'm, <laughs> I'll be looking at myself, and that'll be I'll it. Never I'll, leave you, Jim. James, I'll never leave you. I'll never leave you. <laughs> I'm here. Okay, baby. I wanted a one-on-one. -on -one. We needed to take some break, a long show, but I wanted knowing when Karen wasn't going to be on just to, you know, you were, we, we, we spent so much time together 
not only on the show, of course, those five years, but even the years afterwards, we'd always find time to make good coffees for ourselves and stuff. And, uh, yeah. I, but, I, you know, this show is really cool because, it, you know, we're going to all the different parts of the country, you know. And, so, uh, yeah, I, you know, I didn't quite understand. Get me up to speed. So right so now. The first group. So this is called America's Favorite Zico. And in <laughs> the, the first uh, region, we had the, everybody from New England. We've just got through the groups from East Central, New York, Pennsylvania, and this. We're about ready to go down to the Carolinas and things along those lines. But one of the things that's so interesting about you, and I want to talk about pre-902 and O before we get to 902 and O, is when I think of you, and the interesting thing, you grew up in Chicago, the suburbs, but Chicago. You went to college in Boston and New York City. So talk about those three places and influence on you. And I just got back actually from Boston and New York. So it's been a long trip. We, we just came back from a monumental four-week trip ending up in D.C., which was extraordinary. But it was great to be back in the city in New York. You know, I think when you think about <clears throat> growing up in the Midwest and people say, you know, oh, how do you prepare for a part? You know? <laughs> And I think you know that when it comes to being on a show like our show, what you bring is who you are, fundamentally who you are. And what, what I always felt is that you know, the Midwest has a kind of a genuineness that I still treasure to this day when I go back and visit and see my friends. I'm still friends with people who I've said, but I know you are too, but friends with people who... I've known since I was seven years old, you know, and all my friends in high school, we're still, you know, we still stay in touch. And in some ways, yeah, the, the winters there are a bitch. And so you got to be tough in Chicago. So there's a toughness, but there's when people, when people smile at you and, you know, I can always tell somebody from the Midwest in LA, it, it's not, there's no alternative, there's no ulterior motive behind it, you know, which in this town, there could be a lot of ulterior motive behind. In Chicago, I always felt like when people smile at you, it's not because the boss at your coffee, where you, you know your boss at your coffee shop is telling you you have to smile to the you know customers. You know, I agree. You know, I went to the one year and a half to the University of Wisconsin at Madison. It was very easy for me to leave the school for Berkeley. It was very hard for me to leave back behind the friends I had. Yeah, you know, that's the interesting. I met both from yeah. Wisconsin and, and yeah. Illinois, you know, mostly, yeah. of course. I mean, you know, we're the kind of we're the second city, and but and in some ways, we avoid all the pressure of LA and New York of having to be the best, you know. And uh, there's just a genuine quality there, there, there's there's something I mean, and I look, you find it everywhere, but I and I know this can sound so sappy, but I'm not talking about something sentimental. And sappy. I'm talking about intelligent sweetness, sweetness that is real, that is genuine, that that comes from the heart, and is about compassion for other people. And um, I and I, I felt like that was important for the show. And I, you know, I'm thinking about it right now. And I was just, you know, going over our first meeting each other, and you know, all of jockeying and all that stuff. And for an actor which I don't think I realized then, but I realize now as a teacher, relationships are everything. Relationships are everything. How does that person across from you in the scene affect you? Because that's what builds reality. You walk into a room and you see your mom, you know, I know she's not with us anymore, but you know, you see your mom, you don't have to go, oh, that's my mother. Okay, how do I respond to her? Mm, what does she mean to me? Let me think this up. No, you see your mother and boom. Your and little child. Immediacy. Yeah. Immediacy, right? So you have to do that as an actor. Like you walk in the room, and when I see Shannon as my daughter, it's it's the relationship that gives it the, the verisimilitude. And that's a Midwestern thing. Well, we're talking no, about No, no, I heart. think that's an acting thing. And I think that I have to say we we all shared, thanks to you in large part, and I'm not, I'm not, I really mean this. We all shared a kind of a wicked sense of humor. Everybody had a wicked sense of humor and we brought it to the work, you know? That's what the actors can do. We're gonna come back I agree. move to our-
Jim, 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 Jim. Right. Jim, well, Jim, Jim. I knew these guys were going to be coming in. We're going to talk about other things. I just wanted to free form it. I was going to say you went to New York College and MIT and Juilliard. In Juilliard, you had to take a class in improv, and so we did one. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to say all kinds of things about Larry Mullen, but I, I guess we can't do that now. Oh, no, it doesn't bother me. You can say anything about any either. The, leave Melanie alone, but the two of the I'll leave Melanie alone. Oh, thank you. Uh, James, you know, I just we, I know that you just did uh, some TV. It's always good to see you on our television. And um, oh, just thank you. Yeah. I mean, but yes. Peter, I want to say also. And I, I, the other thing is, and I know you say this a million times, but, you know, the actors don't get to say this a lot, which is we wouldn't be a show without the people watching the show. Okay. And I think that, you know, in TV, like in stage, you are all in the room together. It's a, it's a big mush and it's a it's this weird communication. And when, you know, we're doing the show, we don't know how it's affecting people. Like you were just saying to the people before, Chuck, you were saying that, you know, it's like, oh, my God, you know, it's like those days when I would be in some airport in the middle of Podunk, you know, not Podunk, a small town, um, you know, and somewhere like it, I was in, I don't know where I was. I was in Nebraska. Vineyard Haven, Vineyard Haven let's say. It's Vineyard Haven, Haven, anywhere, Vineyard Haven. even Chicago going back and people coming up to you and being, you know, really excited and, 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 and so grateful for the show. So, my heart goes out on this 31st anniversary to to the to the fans and this and and the fact that they're still here <laughs> helping us feel like we still are relevant and that, and that we're still here too so that's a good thing and we're still here too and it's so it's great and i just want whoever happens to be listening all three people that you know <laughs> that 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 you are so important and you need to know that okay uh, Yes. Uh, much love to your work too, James. I know we Thanks say that a God. lot here on this show. I mean, the more we watch this show over and over, the stuff that you did. I mean, with the kids, and whether it's whether it's Brenda, Brandon, or you know, I was watching something last night with you and Steve, you know, or Ian, whatever. But the work is always there, and there's always just something really powerful in how you delivered it at, at all those years ago. Oh, so you. it still really uh, holds holds true. Keep okay, rocking. James, we're going to say goodbye to you and bring on our next panel. Thanks, Thanks. One Hi, James. Thank Great you so much. Great to see you all, guys. Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And mazel tov to all of us. I don't like just call him Bill. Bill sent me to school in Virginia. I've spent a lot of time in the States. All right, Central South. Central South. South East. Yes, we've got everybody <laughs> except going? our North Carolina other person besides Drew. Drew. But well, we, oh, so we, we got Drew Kinney, so we got North Carolina, Carolina right. completely yes, covered. We got it covered. We're good. I've, been every, I've been in every. I've been in every one of these states. I love these states. <laughs> I have never been to Kentucky, but I am now going to make a toast with a rye whiskey made in Louisville, Kentucky. Ooh, and I have been to all the other states and love them all. So. Okay, cheers. cheers to that. Also, let's start off this segment with this for Miranda. So I've been told that uh, we're doing a show with a fan from every state. Every state. Is that right? Is that right? Now, Miranda. Now, Miranda. I know you're in I Kentucky. I know you're in Kentucky. I'm not sure where, but I just wanted to say hi from Kentucky. That's right. Yeah, it's Mel Silver. I know I don't really look like him anymore, but it's been a while. But I am him. And I just wanted to say hi. Thanks for being a fan of the show. And I hope you have a great day or night. Whatever it is. Bye, Miranda. That is wow. specifically for Miranda. You gotta love uh, date, uh, Dr. Silver, Dr. 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 Mill. 
Yeah. He's in Lexington. Hard. Where are you, Miranda? No, That's Lexington. where I'm at. And I have been waiting to run into him, but I haven't. I have run into him yet. Oh, <laughs> virtually, I, 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 I've been to Versailles, Connecticut, Kentucky. Yeah, Versailles. Yeah, I've got a friend who has a property there. Yeah. Well, you know, Chuck? he's got a. Doesn't he have a sports talk radio show? You should call into the show. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Calling. I need. To he would love that. He would love now. That. You're, yeah. Now you're on first name basis. Yeah, I, I think he does the play-by-play -play for University of Kentucky, doesn't he, Chuck? Or something, or some, or after show something. He yeah. He's in Lexington. That's why he would be there. <laughs> Chuck, I was just watching an episode of uh, last night, and poor Babette sold out Mel Silver and uh, told the girls that he was having an affair on on Jackie. I don't know <laughs> midlife now what, right? Okay, let's talk to say hello to Drew. Uh, from North Carolina, Drew hey, Kinney, hey, our Drew. buddy, and then Everybody. we're going to get to all you all. Um, but Drew, it's good seeing you 31 years later. Well, not for me, but these guys, but 31 Happy years later, you're doing this show. It's um, hard to believe. Yeah. I didn't, ha I didn't have gray hair then, and I had a full hair head. I mean, a full, full hair. hair. Exactly. But, still the, but then and now, the coolest guy in the room. No question. Oh, always. I wish he was doing the whole show with us. Yeah. You and Jill. You and Jill. Absolutely. The cool, the cool Drew, Drew, I mean, we've talked to you about specific episodes here. Do you have um, certain memories of doing the show or significant ones of building something or putting something together and knowing, like, okay, this is going to be a fucking great set? Sorry for the F bomb already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, I was thinking about that earlier. I actually sent you some images earlier for later that you can look at. Um, but it, one of those images, um, and it actually it was setting something up for the show, but it was something that we did internally to prepare for it. It's a, a layout of the West Beverly Blaze newspaper because we had uh, we wanted to refresh it. And and it's funny because Shannon had done something and got Paul Wagner angry and he was just hopping mad. And so I did the mock-up of it, and it says, uh, student dies in fiery plane crash, and took it into him to present it to him. And he just <laughs> broke down laughing. He was no longer mad at Shannon anymore. We could just get on with our work. And you know, nobody's, nobody's ever seen it. You're the only, I think you're the first person that's seen it in 30 years because I sent you an image of it. Oh, that's amazing. I'll that's see it. That's a great story. <laughs> that's great. I love that. Um, okay, let's say hi to uh, Gary Johnson, who... Um, there's a friend of Rory Karp, another Rory another Karp. another Rory Karp another friend. Rory Karp, uh, <laughs> friend. Um, Gary, you knew Luke. Well, uh, first, can y'all hear me? Yeah. Sure. Yes. Hey, man. hey uh, hello from Charleston, South Carolina, and uh, I worked with Luke for three days in Cincinnati on the Marge Shot documentary. She was owner of the Cincinnati Reds. Sure. That's right. Yeah. And right. with Rory, me and Luke worked together, and um, I got a few stories about Luke just in the short time that I worked with him. I got, I felt like he's one of those guys and you'll all relate to this. He gets in the car and five and in five minutes, you know, number one, he's a great guy. And number two, you felt like I, I've known you and our conversations have just picked up where they left off kind of guy. Mm -hmm. And cool. he, just an incredible experience. I didn't know him from Adam. He didn't know me. I, I'm a camera guy. I'm doing this documentary. I could be one of probably the 10,000th camera guys he's ever been around, but treated me like I was the first one. It was an incredible experience. It was an experience I'll never forget just because of his kindness, really. Gary, he did that to all of us. I mean, I worked with him every day for five years and felt like I'd known him for 100 years at that point. And the very first week, I felt that way about him. Just amazing. Uh, the first thing we did, we had a, you know, a couple of shoots around Cincinnati, him talking about Marge Shot, a huge Cincinnati Reds baseball fan. The documentary was about the owner, Marge Shot. Well, every time we got in the car from some kind of lighting situation, he would insist on carrying all the extension cords. And I'm like, Dude, no, I am I am taking care of all of that. Don't worry about it. He goes, no, I'm part of the crew today. I'm part of the crew. And it was just me and him and an audio guy and Rory Karp. <laughs> he always wanted to be a grip. He guy. always did. I don't get it. But he wanted to be a grip. There was part of him that really had that. I get it. Yeah. He definitely. He wasn't that guy like standing around. And he, he saw exactly the people right. working and thought, I got to do yeah. something. Yeah, and he really would just did. do it. That, that's just who he was. Maybe the biggest impression he made on me, and 
you know, this is after I'd known him for three or four hours and we're in a car all day and doing shoots. The last scene we had, we had a shot and it was a driving snowstorm. It was about 18 degrees out. It was obviously in the middle of winter. The last shot we had was at a cemetery and he was going to walk up to Marge Schott's grave site. This is all real. And look at it and just kind of sign. That was the very parting shot of the documentary. Kind of like, you know, wow, you know, rest in peace. Well, the first time he walked up to her gravestone, he kind of went. And I said, and he goes, was that okay? And I'm like looking around like, what do you mean? He goes, well, well tell me, how, tell you how, many, how I should do it. And I'm like, you've done like 50 films and you're asking me to direct you. Right? <laughs> it was one of those, it was a, one of those incredible moments that I was kind of looking around for like, please, someone bail me out here. <laughs> so the next thing I looked at him and said, well, I just, I just need to go up to the grave site and go, give me a big sigh. You know, like, and he goes, I got it. I got it. I got it. And so he walks up to the gravestone and gives a great big sigh and kind of just walks off backwards. And he looks at me and goes, is that a good take? And I'm like, that's good. That's good. It's perfect. It was, it was one of those moments, you know, I mean, I'm around a movie star once every 10 years. And here I am directing Luke Perry in a scene. So it was, it was one of the most remarkable and most memorable moments of my career, albeit it probably took place in 45 seconds in that yeah. moment. Well, here's to Luke. Yeah, to yes. Luke. We'll be to talking Luke. a lot about him here. Today, Rory has a bunch of friends that know him, Luke, yeah. And uh, one parting little story I have is uh, we we wrapped all, we're having lunch, and uh, again in Cincinnati, I go to the restroom, and lady stops me frantically. She goes, is that? I'm like, yeah, that's him. And she <laughs> says, do you think he'd care if I approach him and ask for an autograph? And I'm like, you know what? I've known him for just a couple of hours, but I'm pretty sure he won't care at all. <laughs> and sure enough, she walks up and he's like, hey, like you've known her forever, you know, just Amazing. unbelievable. But I had that confidence that he's not going to say anything cross to you. I, I've known this guy just for a few hours, but I just know what kind of person he is. And she was so tickled and, you know, she recognized him. And so this wasn't too long ago. You know, this was probably, you know, five or six years ago. So wow. he no, was can, past, you, you know, his 90210 prime, but everybody still around there still knew who he was. Totally. Well, but you also you can take the boy out of Ohio, but you can't take the Ohio out of the boy. <laughs> yeah, he was more Southern than Ohio. Do that. He he narrated the documentary and also we he was in all the two shots, did some stand ups, and we had those pensive shots of him walking over the Cincinnati Bridge. And, but that parting shot of him approaching the uh, graves the grave site was the most unbelievable moment that I've ever had with a movie star. Yeah, I'm directing the guy. Right. I had to slap myself two or three times, but it was a great moment. And I'll never forget him and how kind he treated me because he knew, hey, man, I'm up here. You're way down here, but I'm going to treat you like a peer right now. Yeah. All right. We're going to say That's goodbye awesome. to Gary and we're going to let the fans, because I don't think you know too much about the history of Beverly Hills now, 210. We're going to let these fans um, have yeah, a well, yeah, well down Thank there. You so you much, Gary. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, 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 Low, country, Low country cooking. Oops. All right, let's start with um, Ann Fernando. That. It is so good to see you. I got to meet you through the um, the thing we did with um, Kelly Tata. You're yes. so such a well spoken person. And oh, you're cool. so sweet. <laughs> well, well, hopefully, I'll live up to that today. Oh, I think so. I'm, I'm counting on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. So, <laughs> yeah, talk to me about you coming into okay. 90210. All right. So I grew up in Virginia Beach, where I started watching 90210 uh, as a senior in high school. Uh, the show taught me everything that my parents and Catholic school didn't teach me. And then I went to Virginia Tech, where uh, I had three best girlfriends, and we all went through the four years of college together. And we... Um, Ended up in the dorms getting set up with four guys just to have dinner at this fancy restaurant in at Virginia Tech. It was part of the thing that the school did. And we found out we had 90210 in common. And then from then on, every Wednesday night for four years, religiously, even when we went off campus, we continued to watch it. So um, it's a joke amongst my friends that I can almost relate any event in life to a 90210 episode. <laughs> and once I graduated... <laughs> yes. And once once I graduated um, and went back to Virginia Beach, my younger brother and I had an eight year age gap. 
and he started watching 90210 and that bridged the gap between us and so I, we didn't really feel our age difference and even now he lives in wisconsin we get together every time we get together we watch it especially chuck we can say all the lines from the high school episodes they're our favorites and um even in our daily life we still use the phrases so for example like if plans get canceled we say my plans just got poxed <laughs> that's great and, and, and uh, even in my job, if someone is having a meltdown, I always say, don't have a French fry freak out. <laughs> so, those are some of the uh, uh, memories uh, and how I use 902 in my daily life. But um, two, two fun facts. One fun fact, which is not so fun. My best friend stole my boyfriend. So, Lovely. <laughs> so Shannon and Kelly helped me navigate oh. that situation. Oh. And then okay. in my own head, this was my boyfriend for two seconds. Oh, but just too bad he didn't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that picture get taken, in? Oh, my gosh. So uh, Luke came to Atlanta, uh, and he performed in this uh, play that's – I think they still it's still going on in New York called Celebrity uh, Auto – Celebrity oh, Auto Autobiography, autobiography yeah. Like and so it was different actors. And what was cool about it is they read biographies of different um, – actors sports figures different people and but then they would like like they would read like elizabeth taylor's uh you know words from her autobiography with one of those seven million men that he she dated uh, biography and would put them all together to kind of make the story so luke was in that and what was crazy is we get to the show my husband and i sitting i'm sitting there and i see people with vip bracelets and so I go, honey, go ask what those are for. And he's like, well, this is how you can go meet the cast. And I was like, how come I didn't know about this? Because I would have paid any money to meet, you know, Luke Perry. <laughs> so, you know, my husband's way cuter. And there was a woman. So I was like, go flirt with her to see if we can get in back there. And of course, <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't get in. So we get to the lobby and everyone's like leaving. And I'm standing there and I say to him with almost like scary eyes, I say, we are not leaving here till I meet Luke Perry. <laughs> so he's tall, and there's a bunch of a crowd. And Luke comes in through the into the into the lobby, and is like, uh, "I don't, I don't even see him." And I told my husband the whole time, "If I meet Luke, make sure I call him Luke and not Dylan." And so he's walking, <laughs> he's he's walking up into like the VIP, and I see him, and I and my husband said he's never seen me move that fast. I was here, and I was there. And then he's walking up and I just said, not too loudly, I just said, Luke. And he turned around and he's like, hey, I mean, he could have gone to the VIP to go start his evening, but he stopped. <coughs> he was like, hi. And like, I didn't ask for an autograph. He took my program and started autographing it. And then I was like, actually, I have something better. And I pulled out <laughs> the first, uh, the 90210 DVD that had his picture on it and he signed it. But he was so gracious. Like, uh, like, uh, is it Gary that was saying he was like, the, he is, was the nicest celebrity I've ever met, you know, next to Chuck and Larry, of course. <laughs> and the last thing I'll say, I'll, I won't take up too much time, but everyone knows after the uh, high school episodes, you see Charles Rosen. Never in my wildest dreams did I think I'd get to meet him and Larry go on a bus uh, and, and get to hear some backstories and uh, oh, wow. see some of the sets. Oh, you want the bus in? Oh, For great. Me, that, 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 that kind of started. Yeah. The Darren Martin, Darren Martin, and the Pizza yeah. Pals. That was and my, my Cheers, Cheers to Darren. Darren Martin. Cheers and my to brother, Darren. my little brother keeps telling me to stop name dropping Chuck and Larry every time I'm talking. <laughs> <It's pretty good laughs> Go to name drop Anne. all you need to, man. I can't we, we like Thanks it. Thanks for the time. <laughs> I do it all yeah. the time. All right. Let's see. Uh, Heather from Tennessee. Yeah. I love your bow, first of all. Hello. Love it. Oh my God. Where in Tennessee you. are you? I'm in Chattanooga. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I grew up right outside of Chattanooga in North Georgia. And so that's where I watched the show. But now I'm in Chattanooga. But I will say one of my favorite characters is the fashion. Because in college, I was the girl at the 90s party who wore this dress every time. <laughs> and people knew who I was. So, Amazing. Um, <laughs> I, I I love it. I host. Um, I'm an executive director of a nonprofit, and I host a fundraiser every year that is 80s and 90s theme. And we always have people who dress up in costume from 90210, uh, which I think is 
amazing. Yeah. Um, but I started watching the show as a six year old. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, I was six years old and all of the kids on the playground would talk about the show. And so I think my mom may have thought it was a nighttime version of Saved by the Bell. And I think that's the only reason I probably got to watch it, to be honest. Uh, but I watched it all through school, watched all the reruns at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, and now still watch every time I'm needing a pick me up or just need something to zone out for a while. That's my background. Okay, but you were six years old. I mean, what did you think was going on? I <laughs> I, there are some things looking back now that I didn't pick up on when I was I, six. That's, I, I, I like that about you, Heather. Yes. But I will tell you, one of my vivid memories from probably about the third grade uh, was a group of girls in the bathroom at school. And one girl was talking about some boy she liked and another girl. And I looked at them both and I said, well, you're the Brenda and you're the Kelly. And he'll like both of you, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Sage advice, and, then and play, that's, that's a memory. Play a, song, play a song over and over at the jukebox. So in because, exactly. you were so, because you were such an early adapter, did that make you more popular as the show went on and you knew your friends? started to find it, but you knew everything already about it? Oh yeah, and I had all the merch. Uh, my birthday parties were 90210 themed. Uh, I had a birthday party a few years ago that was 90210 themed. I mean, everybody probably since the first grade probably associates this show with me. That's amazing. That's cool. That's amazing. That's I cool. just want to tell Heather too, that in the next section, why, uh, when we're doing the, the, the South South, our friend um, Diane Kennedy, who is the, uh, you know, so stick around for that one after we're done. You yeah, sure. yeah. I, 545 -ish. Melanie, can we have her stay somehow? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Actually, she's South South, which comes on about 545, running a couple okay. minutes late. We could probably pop you on for that section. Okay. I can make that happen. All right. So stay around. Be back here at 545 Pacific. Okay. That's a good that. Chuck just making that happen like that. Boom. Please. Right, 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 right into the next I'm your wingman, Pete. I'm your wingman here. Uh, I, want, <laughs> I want to show uh, Drew was talking about some of these things. This is what he was talking about, right? <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I love that. That's an incredible. Uh, yeah, I know more. you guys are all shocked, but you know, <laughs> hey, it was uh, the rain crew. It's going around. You know? I love There's it. little stand-ups for the tables in the casino. Oh my god! Oh, cool, man. Yeah. Let's see. Wow. The Krantz, the Hollywood yes. episode. Yeah. Rex Interior and Poison Ivy. Was that yours? Yeah, I got to meet him too. It was awesome. Yeah. Oh, this Clarence is Larry. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's very that's cool. Bro, that looks cool. So cool. Uh, uh, Roger, Roger Corman, Corman Film Festival. Festival. Larry, you put yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, we did all this stuff. Roger they talk Corman about on. the fact they're not wearing pants, all the little fine print. Uh, you have to kind of really look at it. Oh, I see this now. Yeah, <laughs> well, wow, okay, cool. Very good stuff, ma'am. My, my daughter, Lin my daughter, I, I Lindsay, has one of those wildcat, no parking, you know, parking things. Uh, oh, yeah, and I think I have one too over there. Uh, yeah, those yeah. are great. Yeah. Jody from West Virginia, why don't we hear a little bit about your story watching 90210? Where are you from West Virginia? I'm from Clarksburg. I'm about okay. um, 30 minutes south of Morgantown, WVU, Mountaineers. Yeah, I've been to Morgantown. Yeah, I've been there. Okay. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. And is it almost heaven? Is it, is it almost Abs heaven? Absolutely. All right. <laughs> Beautiful hill, hill, hill country there. Yes. So I was in seventh grade about 12 or 13 and we would all identify to a character <laughs> and have lunch and pretend we were the characters. Um, what else? Um, my favorite, I think starting of the episodes is probably senior dance. They become like the characters that, you know, you really could identify and they became like this big group of friends. So I always, you know, I always wanted to have this big group of friends. And when, when I finally did get in high school, I, I still have those friends. So they taught me yeah. to be a kind person and to be a friend and always to be there. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Yeah, it was a fun to the show. <laughs> yes. Um, the other thing I think as my mom was a single parent was we didn't talk about those issues. Um, so that show taught me about you know, sex and boys and those things you don't talk about when you're in seventh grade and junior high. <laughs> um, 
Um, fun fact and about so your, me. So your perspective now, do you look back on it and think that we did, our curriculum was good? Yes. I mean, yes, because my mom, I mean, we talked about it a little bit, but we didn't, you know, it was so foreign to talk about things like that back then. Right. So, I, I mean, clear through, even when you get into the college years of the drugs and the alcohol and, you know, clear through that. I mean, all <laughs> stages. Um, definitely. I can relate going into college myself, even as a, you know, when they start, when they graduate college and go into the workforce, like I'm still, I relate to those things. Um, a fun fact about me is I work at a desk all day. Mm -hmm. And I need background noise. So I play the shows 90210 for my eight hours every day at my desk. Amazing. <laughs> every, <laughs> every single day it is playing. Amazing. Yes. What do your coworkers think about that? <laughs> um, they don't mind. They're used to it. So are you on Pluto, T are you on Pluto TV or Hulu? Or yes, what? Pluto. Everybody's Pluto. making money there, Charles, Larry. Yeah, we like it. Yeah, yes. you know what I mean? Yes. Eight hours a day, she screams. <laughs> yes. She's doing it. Very Roy, she, yeah, I mean, do it every, do it more if you can. Put on another TV, yeah. right? I wish, I wish Pluto would run them all. Like, they kind of stop at a certain part. They don't right. go after they graduate college, but I wish they would they would do that we love probably, pluto pluto know. is the best we know yes. everything they do is great okay yes. let's move on to uh miranda and say yeah. hello to her and hear hear her her story uh we talked a little bit to her about matthew lawrence but yeah yes so i am from lexington as well um and like i said i have not ran into him yet <laughs> <laughs> um but i'm hoping one day um, but as far as the show, like the others, I was pretty young when I started watching. I was probably eight years old. Um, and of course, my parents were strict as well as far as what I was watching on TV. So I actually started watching this show at my cousin's house. Um, so it was like, I believe it might have came on Monday night then. Um, so I would always make sure I was there to watch it. But you know, her mom, she had the cool mom, as, and I was able to watch it there. Um, but, I mean, I, I love the characters. I admired them. Kelly was, like, my, <laughs> I guess, who I wanted to be when I got her age, and I would write letters. I even got the postcards that they would send back when she wrote a letter. Um, so th the characters, I, I really looked up to them, and that's when I got in high school, that's what, what I wanted my high school life to be like. Amazing. Miranda, when you say we're watching it, was was did you start right at the start when the show started in the early 90s? Actually, it might have been around <laughs> the summer episodes. Hmm. The reason I, I ask is that I, I saw Larry's eyebrow raised about Monday nights. And when you say watching Monday night, and I believe that you probably could because in those first Watch. two years, we, we were with, I don't know, channel 89, you know, we were all, the, right. we were two, four and seven. We were out there on the extremes of it. And so those station owners, a lot of them didn't really love this racy show from Los Angeles about, about young kids. And so we would get preempted a lot. Mm. So I think that's probably what happened here, Larry, that they, they would dump it on a Monday when it was less, they had something on Thursday, like, I don't know, the fishing show or something that was big. Yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah, because that station probably came out of, you know, it probably came out of Lexington, though. Your your local channels are in Lexington? I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah. Problem. No, no, man. We were, you know. It was always we Wednesday were... night. Yeah. It was, it was Monday. Monday. I don't well, they I hear, with... Not to get into this, but they wouldn't let another channel get it ahead. They wouldn't let people see it before the Wednesday show. <laughs> no, so it was when she was that, first. Like in Canada. It was Thursday night when, when Miranda was looking at her. Oh, so it would have oh, been yeah, yeah, Monday. You push it yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah, they kick it then. Yeah. Okay, guys, this has been great. We're going to move the group along. Melanie is giving me text messages saying we need to move the show along. <laughs> oh, so Melanie is and Heather Stickler. Me Melanie, <laughs> it's Mid North Miranda. Central. And I'm playing the stinger for Mid North Central, right? That's coming next. Right. Bye, everybody. Drew, take care, buddy. Melanie, you are nice muted. So I don't know if that's what I'm playing, but I think it is what I'm playing next. Bye, everyone. Don't mute it. Bye. Are you working at a coffee house? Uh, that's pretty funny. When you grow up, maybe you can have one too. What are you doing here? Hell, well, I just dropped Mel and Aaron off. They're flying to clean. 
Cleveland to uh, visit the grandparents. Wow, very exciting. After the Walshes and I got back from Lake Minnetonka. Whoa, wait a minute. You were in Minnesota with the Walshes? In Minneapolis? Yeah. Hi. Hi. But it's so cold. I could never deal with cold. You'd get over it. Oh, I get fat. Yeah, it's great. I mean, all winter you can eat whatever you want and then hide it under bulky sweaters. My name's uh, Brandon Walsh. Brandon Walsh. Scotch or Irish? Both, actually. By way of Minnesota. Don't see much water in Minnesota. Lots of lakes. Lots of lakes. No oceans. No oceans. My sympathies. My sympathies. the mid north central region todd great work sorry i'm cutting off your end beats there todd i just we need to move the show along i hope you're not offended watching that. um okay let's move along here well we start up just want to give everybody a, a shout out and a thank you and particularly who's from wisconsin you know what yeah, uh jared who's not here yet i'm texting All him right, right now well, this is for the whole place if you were going to have the beer that made Milwaukee famous, it would be Schlitz, but it went out of business. So here's Pat's Blue Ribbon. Here's to all of you. Cheers. Oh, I love a PBR. Yes, it's good to see Jason Hicks. I see him in my window here. That's nice to see. Jason. Yeah. Um, okay. But let's talk to this person first. Um, she's listed as amazing, but I know her name to be Jill, right? Yes. Hello. And what's interesting about what's Jill? Name? Well, Jill is from Ohio, Larry. Thank you. And um, let me see if I can pull this real quick and show you who Jill uh, went to high school with. Wait, I don't have it. Hang on. Uh, go ahead. You can tell them, Jill. Oh, well, if it was I Ohio was in thinking. high school, maybe it was Luke. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> it was Luke. Oh, yes. yes. It was. There Great. he is. Great. Oh, oh, my. There he is. What high school was this? Fredericktown. Fredericktown. So tell me all these years, and you're also ar around Rory Carr for a little bit, I, I understand, right? <laughs> yes. You, so, you I'm sorry, say that again. Were you buddies in high school? Were you buddies in high school? Um, you know, Fredericktown was such a small high school that everybody was buddies. You pretty much knew everybody in the grade grades ahead of you and the grades behind you. Um, it was so a small high school how around. Wild. How wild would that have to be to see him then on television and then on well, this he, show? Right. Luke always said he would be a movie star. And a lot of us were like, oh, yeah, right. But he really did it. Yeah. Yes, he did. Amazing. Did you have times where you hung out and talked to him and, you know, got to know uh, know the guy beforehand? You know, we had Drew Kinney on before and he was talking about and, and, and Gary was talking about just his kindness and all that stuff. Was all of that stuff there back then? It sure was. Um, Luke was a year ahead of me in school, but he was our mascot, our Freddy Bird, and I was a cheerleader. So <laughs> I spent a lot of time with him at basketball and football games. That's cool. And his group of friends and my group of female friends um, hung out a lot together. That's great. So, wait a second, the Freddy Bird, tell us about it. This is like a, a hooded mascot? It is. Um, our mascot was the Freddy Bird. I think we're the only Freddy Bird um, that I know of ever, I guess. We were the Cardinals years and years ago when my um, some of my distant relatives were in school at Fredericktown. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't remember when we became the Freddy Bird, but um, we are actually the Freddies, but our mascot is the Freddy Bird. That's amazing. There was a dance called the Freddy. Remember that? Larry remembers that. I remember it. <laughs> Did you watch 90210 and watch your friend on television? I did. Um, I um, am a little older than some of the people that you had on the earlier show, I believe. So um, I was actually out of college when 902 was on, but um, I always said that Luke was really just being himself. Uh, uh, he was um, he was a friend to everybody, and he um, was a little mischievous, 
And I think that that he was both of those things on the show. Aww. I mean, obviously, want to keep this upbeat, but this was a very sad time, uh, you know, what had happened. Um, did your town get together? Did you guys all talk about him? I know, you know, it was a big loss for everybody, but someone that knew him all the way back then. Um, what did you feel and were you thinking about that? Yes, um, our town was very saddened to hear the news about Luke, um, but his, his family that still lives in the area uh, remain pretty private about it. Um, and so we kind of, um, I don't know if I would say we mourned in silence, um, but uh, they wanted to remain, uh, you know, private and um, deal with um, the tragedy on their own um, without a lot of involvement from uh, the community. But, um, you know, a lot of us reached out to the family, his sister and brother that um, are still um, much connected with the people of Fredericktown. Uh, so it was very sad. It was a very sad time. Yeah. Well, we're going to say goodbye to Jill and let these fans pop in here and uh, talk here. about their their experiences watching Luke as a fan and um, all of that. But thank you for spending some time and, by, and, and coming in to here. Okay. Yes, we appreciate You're it. Welcome. Thank you, Jill. Melanie, I'll let you handle that. Yes. And then uh, this is a shout out for this group. Hey everyone, this is Sarah Melson, AKA Allison Lash. And I have a, a few names from the Midwest, which is where I hail from, um, whom I'd like to send a shout out to. So I'm gonna go ahead and read them off right now. Okay, uh, Rachel and Carolyn from Minnesota, uh, Jason from Ohio, Becky from Michigan. I was actually born in Michigan. Um, Jared from Wisconsin. Love Wisconsin. Oh my gosh. Leslie from Illinois. Brother lives there. And Jen, fellow Hoosier from Indiana. Love you guys. Thank you so much for all your support and um, keep in touch. All right. Have a great day. Bye. Well, that's a Sarah Melson, such a sweet person. She's such a great, yeah, she really is. And this this group, I'm, you know, I, I spent a year and a half living in Madison, Wisconsin, and made a lot of friends from all the states you're from. I spent a lot of time in Indiana. I actually wrote a screenplay called Only in about Indi Only in Indiana about basketball. You, you know, what else would you write about? And and uh, and and my favorite city in the United States except for the weather, and everybody says the same thing in Chicago. So, you know, great to see you all. Yes. Want to shout out a new shirt design real quick before we get into this group. How do you guys think of this? Dancing well, since the 90s. There's our buddy, awesome. Brian Austin Green. I'm sure he'll love one. Cute. All right, let's talk to, um, here we want to start with uh, Claire's bisexual half-brother, Jason. If you guys remember, he pitched that to us at Story Slam. That that's I know Jason is good. Jason on mute. Yeah. So uh, Claire's oh, always in my world. Claire always comes first, so you get the first speaking. He is on mute. Oh, there you go. There you go. Jason. Sorry, there you go. Okay. I'm multitasking here in my car. It's okay. Oh, it's okay. We, you we, made it though, so thank careful. you. I did. Sorry, I think I'm somewhere in near Calabasas right now. I don't even know. Oh, you're in uh, California. I had like one okay. bar, so I was trying to like find my way to three bars. So we should be good. Uh, this is go. very Paul Johansson of you to do the interview in the car. Tell me about uh, you watching 90210 in Ohio. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I grew up in Cincinnati, uh, which is a and still is to this day fairly conservative place um so wait it came out in 90 so i think at that time i was about uh, uh 12 years old 11 or 12 i think when it came out um so i think uh, you know in that time we kind of been primed people of my generation were kind of primed for the show because in the 80s i think um beverly hills kind of became a thing in pop culture like you had movies like beverly hills cop and Sure, Beverly Hills and yes. Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Mm -hmm. There was this really cute cartoon called Beverly Hills Teens also. Nice. So by the time that show came out, I think we were kind of like, um, you know, our interest was peaked, I guess. Um, 
so anyway, so yeah, I, I think I started watching right when the show came out of that first season. I don't know where I picked up, but I specifically remember watching um, like the Slumber Party episode and the um, like Teen Line episode with Brenda. Um, so I know I started watching that first season and, you know, we would watch with like the little circle of friends we had, uh, me and my sister, we would watch, uh, I think it was what Wednesday nights. Yeah. When you started watching time. it, Jason, it was Thursday actually. Was it Thursdays? Hmm. I remember because, yeah. um, like I said, Cincinnati is like a fairly conservative town. Um, and I grew up in a, a fairly religious household. At that time, I was going to a, a private Christian middle school, a Baptist school to be more exact. And so it was kind of like subversive, like kids my age to be watching 90210 because it would just, just seemed so adult at the time. Right. Um, you know, so we would get together and, and try to watch it. And I remember we had we went to church like all the time. And on Thursdays, we had Bible study. And I never wanted to go. My parents always made me go. And we always got back right in the nick of time to sneak off and watch 90210. And uh, I remember <laughs> at the time, the kids I went to school with, um, we, went, we had a class discussion once um, specifically about, like, <laughs> the moral bankruptcy of 90210. And we, <laughs> we, we, we talked about the episode, the spring dance episode where, uh, you know, Brenda goes, she decides she's going to have sex with Dylan. They go and do it. Bam. And it was like quite the scandal in my middle school, you know, cause kids would come in wearing 90210 shirts and they were like, um, frowned upon. Nine and two were, were frowned upon at Central Baptist School. Let me tell you. Well, let me tell you something, Jason. It was really caught me by surprise. Uh, you know, after the show, the nine o two and o had over. It was like like two thousand one, and um, Laura Bush came to California and was speaking <laughs> in Pasadena. And someone asked her about nine o two and o, and she said, "Well, that was not our values." So here we were really <laughs> yeah. about that. Yeah. Um, you, you got know, dissed by Laura Bush. Mm -hmm. yeah. I also just want to, because you were participating, Larry reminded me that you participated in Story Slam. Yeah. Just want you guys here. I was robbed, Jared. by the way. <laughs> I, I agree because I would have been written into Let's your storyline somehow, and and we all got screwed on that one. Yeah, it was a good story, Jason. It was a good stout. story, but I want you to come back at the end of the month because we're actually going to have some performance of the three that when we Larry and I wrote some radio plays about it. That's right, it's so going to be gonna, very exciting. Right. Yeah. Original yeah. nine hundred two and character. characters, and we're in we're in talks with maybe getting someone to play it. I'm not going to say who, but there might be some real fun mm. shit real, happening. Some real star power. Movie. So we'll see what. Yeah. Happens, yes, but well, hopefully, yes, right. Anything can change. Anyway, good to see you, Jason. Okay, Jason, that no. was great hearing from you. Um, were you a Claire fan? Is that why you picked Claire's cousin, or did you just want to get through the uh, the censor here? Um, you know, I no, I, I was a, I was a Claire fan. She wasn't my all time favorite character, but um, and that's it. Goodbye, I Jason. Thought, <laughs> I thought that she would have been the character that would have meshed the best with, yes. you know, a gay best friend or a gay family no, no. member. Absolutely. Yeah. Very true. Okay, let's move along to Leslie from Chicago. Hi. How is everything in Chicago? You guys talk about baseball. You traded everybody away this year. The everybody. The Bears, the Cubs. It's just a mess out here. They don't have one player. <laughs> well, at least the Cubs won a couple of years ago, though. So that's that, that's right. you can like post on that for a couple of years. And when you were watching 90210, you Chicago had this basketball player named uh, what's his name, Michael something. That was uh, really good. Jordan something <laughs> like that something. Yeah. All right. um, Tell us about your experience watching 90210. Yeah. Well, first, I love your podcast. I absolutely love all of you. So thank you so much for oh, having thank me. Thank you so much. Um, I, like most of the people who have been on the show already, were young, junior high when the show was on. And the, the big stories, the summer episodes and the love triangle was all when I was in junior high. So they, these people were the epitome of what I thought it was like to be in high school, to have a boyfriend and to do all of that. And it was appointment TV, Thursday night, 8 o'clock, before the time of DVR and, you know, uh, streaming all of that. We, I would sit on the my parents' bed and watch it, and my best friend and I would call each other on the, on the commercial and talk about it. And then the show would come back in, we'd hang up and then watch the show and call each other again through the entire 
show for years we did that it was it was absolutely my everything for you know for years for years yeah that is such a throwback cool. to a different culture completely yeah. but i and i, I know, relate to it I to it. the kids don't get it you know no, no. it's yeah, all on demand on demand culture is different on demand is different yeah exactly having yeah. apartment TV, we, you know, right. we had, we right. had one shot at it i noticed um, hulu is finally doing like two episodes and then they start doing every week. It's nice to see that format return a little bit so we can watch a show every week and get looking forward to it. I miss that. Don't you miss that format a little bit? You know, it's yeah. not the excitement, you know? Yeah. Right. right. That's what part of what made the shows like 90210 so great. You can look forward to it Wednesday or Thursday, whatever. And even the DVDs, the DVDs are so much better because everything that they've cut out, you have and you have it all. It's just, you know, it, it's absolutely, it, it was my world for years and still is. Let's go over to uh, Jen from Indiana. Sarah Melson said hi. That was cool. Was she yes, that was very cool. Thank you. Um, hey, everyone. Thanks for having me. Um, what, where are you, where are you in Indiana? Hi. What part of Indiana? So I live in Greenwood, Indiana, which is just south of Indianapolis. Um, but I grew up in northern Indiana and I was the same age as the characters. I'm class of 93 and class of 97. So when it's a show about teens, four teens, starring teens, with drama like a soap opera came out, I was there for it. Um, and I, I vaguely remember watching season one, but I vividly remember when um, you started airing in the summer because there was nothing new on TV. So that's kind of what definitely drew me in as a fan but when you brought in the triangle i was hooked that was that was the moment for me so kudos to steve and jessica for bringing that soap opera drama yeah. to the show because that's what i loved about the show that's mm. why i tuned in i wanted to see who was dating who who was <laughs> breaking up with who who was coming into the show that was new that was going to break up a, a relationship or sure. stir the pot or any of those things. Um, I loved that drama of the show. Um, Did your parents we, love that you loved that drama? Or were, were, they, were they into the show or not so much? They weren't. No, no, they weren't. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like I, I said, just, I've been I, to Indiana. That's why I asked the question. You know? Yeah. Um, I, wa I watched it. I think it used to come on on Thursdays for a while. Mm -hmm. Thursdays and then I and know, Wednesdays, yes. I know when I was in college, we would have watch parties every Wednesday. Um, and either in the dorm or back then, we didn't even necessarily have TVs in every dorm. You just had a TV in like the common area that was downstairs. Mm -hmm. you and so you Bloomington? try and commandeer the TV before somebody else did yeah. so that you could watch 90210. Were you in Bloomington? <laughs> No, I actually went to a small Christian college um, up around Muncie. It's called Anderson University. Nice. Larry, have you ever spent any time in Indianapolis? Charles? I, you... I have I have spent time. I was in Richmond, Indiana, which mm -hmm. is in the uh, southeast corner uh, to visit a, you know, the world's foremost uh, the, uh, expert on a, on a famous playwright screenwriter named Ben Hecht. And, uh, you know, this beautiful countryside there, you know, for this. And I was in the opposite part of the state, spent a lot of time around Bloomington and Nashville and, and drove around to do research for my uh, my basketball story. Yeah. 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 We love we love our basketball here in Indiana. We love our um, uh, IndyCar racing as well. So we are big uh, with our Indianapolis 500. I saw the Rolling Stones in Indiana. Okay, let's see if we can make this work with Minis with uh, Carolyn from Minnesota. Yeah, we got to make Minnesota work. I mean, hey guys. we're all great we have, states, but Minnesota, yeah, come Yay. on. Sorry oh, about hello. that. I didn't. I don't know what it was with the tech, but sorry about that, guys. It's all right. There's you're here about now. people from Minnesota that makes everything sound so much nicer, right? <laughs> Minnesota <laughs> nice, right? Yeah, exactly. It's true. It's so true. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, tell us about your 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 uh, walk into 90210 and how you found it and watched it in Minnesota. Yeah, was it cool so that they I, would talk about Minnesota so much? <laughs> it was so cool. I thought I was Brenda Walsh. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Because keep in mind, keep in mind when you live in the Midwest, like everything is so popularized on the East Coast and West Coast, so that 
like the fact that they brought up Minnesota, I was like, we're on the map. It's a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just thought it was so cool. Um, but I started watching the show when I was about probably eight or nine and then continued watching it with my, you know, my best friends. And we always are like shouting off one liners from the show all the time still to this day. Um, and then continued to watch it actually through college, like many others. Um, but the funny part is, is that when I graduated from college, my mom had said to me, Carolyn, I'm going to need you to go out and meet people because that's all you do is watch reruns of 90210. Like, unless you're going to marry Luke Perry, we're going to need you to go, like, out and meet people. <laughs> so, oddly enough, um, I went after my mom told me that. I had watched the show, like, just a ton after I graduated from college. I went on a blind date and I met my husband. So it wasn't Luke Perry, but I met my husband, you Very know, true. after my short breakup with 90210. And, <laughs> and he had nothing, he never watched the show, right? He had no idea what you were talking about. Super funny. He is not a super fan and it was almost a deal breaker, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, real quick, someone asked who all your favorite characters that we talked to so far. Uh, Carolyn, who is your, your fave? Oh, it's like choosing between your children. Um, I'd probably say my favorite was, oddly enough, I like David. Cool. Um, which David. not a lot of people have said. And I really, I did like Brenda. I thought she had like a great dramatic flair. So those are probably oh. my two favorites. Yes, she did. Uh, Jason, um, what about you, your fave? Uh, I think in the, at first it was definitely Brenda. Uh yeah, the first four seasons, definitely Brenda. When she left, it was quite the scandal in the Midwest. And uh, I think maybe after her, it shifted to Kelly, just because all of the crazy, crazy things that happened to that girl in the in the remaining six seasons. Uh, so, yeah, it, it flip-flops. Yeah, and that's credit Larry Mullen. Uh, <laughs> Leslie, what about you, your fave? Same. I think um, Claire, of course. Uh, Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> point. Is that the correct point answer? Point. That is the correct answer. Point. 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 But Claire and then probably Kelly, because I, I everyone wanted to be Kelly. Sure. Jenny. Uh, Jen? Uh, I'm same as Leslie. I'm Kelly. I was Kelly all 10 seasons. Um, you know, I think someone, someone mentioned, you know, Beverly Hills in California to us in the Midwest was, was at least for me, wasn't somewhere that I would ever visit. And right. so we didn't have a lot of exposure to that. And so, you know, when you saw Kelly, she was trendy. Um, you know, she drew, she drove a BMW and that was like my dream car when I was in high school, oh, wow. um, you know, beautiful, you know, popular. And those were the things that you wanted to be. Um, mm -hmm. And so I just, I adored her character. I loved all of her storylines. I rooted for her for 10 seasons. Well, Jen, it's great that you say that because, you know, the network said to us, how can kids in the Midwest relate to the fact that Kelly Taylor's driving a BMW? I, yeah. I actually had that conversation at one point. So I'm glad you related to her. Wow. Uh, our buddy Ron, Ryan Thomas Brown says, I swear to God, somebody better say months. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really it's like months. It. months. It's always <laughs> months. Yes. All right, let's ask Becky uh, who her Hi, favorite Becky. character is and uh, from and, and also, you know, her tell story. Us story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I, I loved Kelly too. Um, I'm a huge Dylan and Kelly fan and what's from pretty much the entire season. I love the way the show ended. Um, so I would have to go with Kelly too. But so I started watching from day one, um, mm -hmm. and I never stopped to this day. I um, I was a grade older than them, so I think I just totally related to what they were going through. But they were just doing it in a much more glamorous fashion than <laughs> I was. Um, back where in where were you? Uh, where were you in Michigan? Um, a, a suburb just outside of Grand Rapids. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. You That's still live in that area too. Yes. I do still live in West Michigan. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So it was just, it was so exciting to, I, I don't know what it was about it. I mean, I had a lot of friends that watched with me at the beginning. Some came and went over the years, um, but I just never left. And um, one of the fun things is, is um, I have the entire series on VHS without wow. commercials. Oh, <laughs> and, and in retrospect, I wish I had the commercials and also a way to play the VHS tapes. But um, I, I spent a lot of time on it over the years to collect those. And um, I mean, I own the DVDs too, but... Um, she has the original kind of cool music, thing. Chuck. Oh, the original, original music. music. 
you know, it, music. I have we, that. Yeah. We got all of these episodes because of my role. They would give me an episode every episode that I produced. But we also taped them. And when we moved, uh, we used to live in Westwood and had a big house. Now we got a smaller little place. We've lived in the beach here in Venice for about 10 years or so. And the fact is we had to downsize. Mm. So I said to Karen, well, let's just give these away because we've got these. Those are good enough. I so wish I had those commercials. Oh, yeah, you I know exactly them. what you're saying, Becky. I know. And the promos. The cool promos yep. that they Fox did. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm right with Someone's you. Someone's going and to I, die tonight. I think tonight. back to the time that I spent to get not have those commercials. You know, I know. But, and it was so interesting that you bring up music too, because just, I'm so I just, this week we'll be finishing a rewatch with my 18 year old daughter, which is so fun. And, um, and when on the episode where Andrea leaves, I cry every time. It's just such a well done episode. But I watched it with her without the original music, and it, I didn't even cry. The music makes such a difference, and that song that's playing when she leaves, and 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 on the DVD it's not there. It's just, got, it, yeah, definitely the music is is yeah, a big yes. part of it. Yeah. All right, well, we have to um, move this group along. And and, and and everybody know, but if if you own the show, uh, why should you care about what people who watch the show uh, feel? So uh, you know. Yeah, Fortunately, we just talked about that. The owners yeah. don't agree with you on that. Yeah. Okay, we're going to move along. We're going to play the show shop ad first. Melanie, did you get my text about what I said? Um, yeah. Okay. Yes, I did. Okay. All right, so we're going right. to play the show shop ad, and we're going to move along, and then the stinger. Well, well, well. When was the last time you checked out the Beverly Hills 90210 show shop? Because now it's loaded with so much more stuff. Did you ever want to join the gang at CU? Because now you can wear your official CU t-shirt. Or want to get into the fun with America's zip code? Represent with this cool swag. Or maybe you have an invite to the Peach Pit after dark and need the coolest shirt ever. We have loaded the store with so much more. So don't be a squeeze. Head over to Beverly Hills 90210showshop.com for all the latest goods. <laughs> Pete, hey. where'd you go? Where'd I had, you go, I had to take a time out. Let's see. South South, right, Melanie? Uh yes, we are South South. Play uh, the oh, I love Atlanta. That's a great city in the South. Yes, sir. What? That's great. That's perfect timing. Look, I I want to take you out to celebrate tonight. I have two tickets to a great club. Okay, yeah, I'd love to go. I could really use a night out. Where are we going? New Orleans. <laughs> It, it just... My mouth's still burning from the jambalaya. <laughs> hey. All right. All right. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hey, Diane. Hello. Hello. We've heard so much about you. This is great. Hey, here we go. Hey, hey, um, can we well, do I just, I just, I've, been, I've always been starting the, the, with the toast. And I've always well, I've had three beers and a, uh, and a shot of bourbon already. <laughs> Hello, is it okay better, Larry? Better, yeah. Yes. Before, yeah. yeah. But I'm raising a glass of water for the South South to salute my friend Diane Kennedy from Louisiana uh, and, and and make a shout out to everybody who's who's really made a commitment to sobriety over their lives. So cheers okay. and, and nice. hi Diane. Hi. Hey, hey, Heather again, Nestor, Diana, so, uh, Caitlin, Rob. Let's start with hey, Rob here. Let's start with Rob here first, yes. um, because you've got a lot going on. Uh, a friend of Rory, new Luke. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I, uh, I'm a TV producer with Rory. The he's a director, and we actually, he's the first time we were with Luke. We were at working at NASCAR at the time, and. Luke had, um, we were doing a show on Bud Moore for the NASCAR Hall of Fame, and Rory was a big Luke fan and ended up becoming a close friend with him. But he's a, at that point, he was a fan, and he uh, he wanted to get him to narrate the documentary mainly just so he could beat him, you know. <laughs> so he, uh, Luke agreed to do it, and they just had an instant bond. And I met him, we did a show with Snoop Dogg, 
and we were at the premiere in LA and Luke came out just as a friend of Rory and I met him just a outstanding guy you know it was such an honor just to get to meet him I never honestly I never actually watched the show so I knew who he was obviously but he was just an outstanding person and the fact he narrated I guess two or three of our documentaries that we had done through time for ESPN and different networks so um yeah, it was just an honor to meet him and just to have as much fanfare as he has and to be that down to earth of a person. It was Rob, you should you, cool. you should have met Jason. Jason was the one who was in the cars. He raced, you know, our, our friend Mr. Priestley. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um well thank you, Rob, for taking some time and telling us about that. Um much appreciated, my man. No doubt, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, yes. guys. Friend Thank of Rory. You, yes. Okay. Um, now we're going to talk to Heather here again. And um, Heather, you're muted. Hello. Okay. For Diane Kennedy, Chuck, you're also muted. Why is Chuck muted? Uh, he was having an <laughs> echo situation, so I muted it. No, it's it's just it's, 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 it's Diana. She's a stickler. Okay. I told you. Stickler. <laughs> All right. But, so I don't Diane. know. Heather, Heather was in the last group and she was talking about her wardrobe, uh, uh, you know, session. So we wanted her to stick around and get to talk to you. So talk. Diane, oh, I, ha I have to show you what I wore to all my college date parties. No, you didn't. Yes. Oh, God, God, God. I found this dress at a thrift store and was just dead when I saw it. And so all throughout the early 2000s in Knoxville, Tennessee, Kelly Taylor run up and down the strip every night. Um, but the first three seasons, the fashion is just everything to girls my age. Um, I can't explain when they're in Paris, the costumes, the school outfits just upped the game for what we all wanted to look like at school. Um, it was just amazing. And I think your talent was far beyond uh, what we knew was coming. And I can look at my wardrobe even today and pick out little things that have touches of 90210. Aww. Well, thank you, Heather. That's very kind. Uh, before we get to Diane, we do have someone who shouted all this group out. Larry, it's... Hello there, this is Jason Carter, a.k.a. Roy Randolph. Uh, this celebration of zip codes and the fans who live in them. This is a great thing. Um, I have lived in many zip codes and enjoyed my time in most of them, uh, particularly 90210. But this is a big shout out to Caitlin in Louisiana from Jason in New Orleans. Uh, keep on being a fan. It was a great show. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah. Very you run into him there. He's in New Orleans. That's <laughs> I, I can't get enough Jason Carter. Really. Where, where are you, Caitlin? Where are hey, you? Where, where, where? Hi, I live in Metairie. Metairie? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm back and forth, back and forth. I'm out, in the, I'm out in the country now most of the time, but I'm, you know, at least once a week I'm in New Orleans. So, yeah. yeah. What area are you in? Well, I sold my houses uh, there. I had two homes in Alters Point. Okay. And uh, one was the Victorian, one was built in the twenties, and I just decided to uh, let those go. It was too much you know, to maintain. Yeah, so, uh, yeah but I, I'm i there more than I'm here, actually. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> the day before yesterday, so. Oh, oh funny. Yeah. Um, for, for Diane Kennedy, going off of what Heather was talking about, um, the looks and the style and fashion of 90210, I do, there is something really to be said about what it did for the 90s, and I think you were a big part of that. Um, first of all, how does that make you feel to hear that and then also um, in putting all that together, I mean, were, were there specific things in, in 90210 that you were like, this is going to, did you know moments, this is going to become a thing or this is going to become a look? Did you start feeling that, that at some point? Not at all, no. Um, I really didn't. We were so busy on 90210, especially in the beginning, trying to feel ourselves uh, 
you know, character wise, script wise, and the you know we had a large cast, usually a lot of extras, and um, so we were just busy, busy in the beginning, and then I believe the second season is when the press started to really pick up on the show, and um, we started seeing. I started seeing reflections of what we were doing on the street and then i knew that it had caught on <clears throat> and then the fashion industry in los angeles recognized me as one of the 10 most powerful which really shocked me because i didn't expect fashion to step into the picture but they did so um you know it was fun though uh once we got a little money <laughs> <laughs> I was three. Spend it. <laughs> season three, exactly. Yes, <laughs> Diane. I was curious. Uh, just in, before we get back to, all down to the fans, uh, how did Aunt Mr. Spelling relate to when this was all happening? Let's go from season two and season three. What he was he excited for? Oh, he, yes. he cared about fashion so much. Uh, everybody, yes. that, he that was, this was really his bailiwick. So I'm interested in your relationship with with the Mister. Yeah, he was very happy. Um, absolutely. Uh, I would go up to his office from time to time and bring a rack of clothes and let him just uh, go through it. So he was a part of the process. Not that it really mattered that much. <laughs> but um, uh, because, you know, when you're on the scene, that's what's really going to dictate what what makes camera. But um, he was very happy, and uh, we had a good relationship. I spent a lot of time on the phone with him, um, explaining to him what was going on and that kind of thing. And um, and it was great. Uh, did he ever call you up after a thing and say I didn't like that? No. No. No, I never got that phone call. Excellent. Well, because he loved everything because you're so good at what you do. He he was he was a happy camper. Mm. So uh yeah. So we, we had a really good report. Our friend Kristen McIsaac says you deserve all the awards, Diane. So hello. Oh. <laughs> all right, let's let's do this here. Uh Diana Lowe has been really wanting to talk to our show here you're you're muted diana so um it's great to see you there she is okay thank you guys yeah, larry so larry found diana diana low in arkansas um and we're jonesboro here. arkansas jonesboro diana north, to of, the, north of the 40. right your, your love for 90210 how did it start give, give us the rundown well, in all reality, I guess um, all my life, I'd always said I was going to be in Hollywood. That's where I was going to do. So I was a huge Aaron Spelling fan at first. That was, and that was like Tori Spelling love boat days. And I just, whenever I found out his other one, my sister started watching it right at the very beginning and I got started and I've never stopped. My family has went crazy because I've, I've been this way forever in in my life i just always wanted to meet tori tori and aaron spelling and this is just a great production i'm so i'm so excited to be here thank you very cool very cool uh and so uh let's move to caitlin right hey hey, hey what's up what's going what's on up? What's <laughs> i'm up? great thank you cool. so much for having me huge fan yeah, of the show no. huge fan of the podcast so Thank you awesome. so much. Okay, no, whatever. What's up? All right, anyway, so what, what <laughs> about tell me about you coming into this uh this this watching and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I actually grew up uh right outside of Chicago. Uh, I'm from Berwyn, Illinois. And so I actually started watching the show uh when I was 19. Um in 2008, I remember seeing the ads for the new 90210 and I remember thinking I I think that's a reboot of the original show. <laughs> So I remember going on Netflix and looking it up, finding it, reading the synopsis and knowing that I was immediately going to love it. So I started getting the DVDs. I fell in love. Um, and then I moved to New Orleans and my parents' Netflix subscription didn't come with me. <laughs> so I haven't, I fast forward to like three, four years ago, um, I was considering getting Hulu and I was looking through it and I saw 90210 was on there and I'm like, I got to get it. So 
kind of just brought me back. I started rewatching, brought me back to the days that when I watched it back in the day, um, and then introduced my husband to it. And I've met friends uh, through it, and it's just been great. So, the other Caitlin, right? Yes, the other Caitlin. Yes, and Kristen. Yeah. Clark, and, Clark, 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 Caitlin? Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's one thing we've world. done is there's been a community of, of people really all over the world who've kind of yeah. uh, got to meet each other and consider each other friends. And uh, that's really been a yeah. very gratifying thing for all of us. Definitely. Especially because when I started watching it, I watched it alone. But now rewatching it, I rewatch it with people. And 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 there's a story with Jason. I don't know if you know it. Um, no. Jason Carter. So, oh, oh good, yeah, it's here. Oh, yeah, lovely. so <laughs> yeah. a year ago, uh, we had Hurricane Zeta um, that hit New Orleans, and uh, we were out of power for a couple days. So it was the day, morning after, and my husband and I, we said, well, let's walk down the street and see if any businesses are open, you know, with generators and whatnot, so we can get some food later. So we walked down the street, and all of a sudden, this gentleman, really friendly, starts talking to us, and it takes me like five seconds, and I go, in my head, I go, that's Jason Carter. That's or that's so, what Randall. <laughs> and, oh and I had seen him on the podcast, right. and I was like, oh, wouldn't that be funny if I ran into him in the French Quarter or something? Thinking that would never happen. And it turns out that, yeah, he right down the street from my house. And so <laughs> my husband goes on multiple walks a day, he works from home, and so he sees him all the time. And oh, amazing. Says hi. Well, and he told him I was going to be. Right, Caitlin, you, you said hello. You introduced yourself. Yeah, right? I introduced myself and I and I well I actually asked him. I said, Are you an actor? I didn't want to be, you know. Yeah. And I he said, Yeah. And I said, Are you Jason Carter? And he goes, Yeah. And he goes, Oh, you must be a nerd. And because he was on Babylon <laughs> Five. And I was like, Oh, actually, <laughs> I was like, I know I'm you sure. from 90210. And then he started talking about the podcast and he's like, Oh, I was on the anniversary show. And he's like, great. Yeah, I know I watched cool. it. And we love Jason super, Carter. Super, here. super nice. You do so, realize that you made story. his year and possibly his decade by recognizing him on the street. Like, Chuck, I have really? To really? I felt bad. I didn't I don't like bothering celebrities. I don't normally do. You know, you know one of the reasons that actors like to shoot in New Orleans is that for some reason no New Orleans people don't bother them. Yeah. They don't they don't get that same crazy fan thing down in New Orleans. Now maybe it's just a live and let live attitude yeah. that we all have in New Orleans. It's like, whatever you're doing, as long as you're not killing anybody, we're good. Exactly, <laughs> you know? yeah, that's true. <laughs> and um, and that's, uh, that's exactly, that's what your reaction reminded me of, Caitlin, is that yeah. people don't, people in New Orleans don't want to step on your toes in any yeah. way. So yeah, yeah, good for you. Thank you. <laughs> it is amazing, though, Charles and Larry, how much people love that Jason Carter, Roy Randolph, those those episodes of the play well, practice. The end of uh, Brenda. The end of Brenda. 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 Yeah. Brenda. Yeah. Brenda. He takes Brenda. her away. He takes in her away. In some ways, in my mind, it redeemed all of season four. You know, those really that cool. arc that was. I mean, you know, here we are. We were this old high school show, and we're doing Tennessee Williams in prime time. You know, it was pretty. pretty it was cool. amazing. It's amazing to think about that. Um, Nestor, hey, from Nestor. Orlando, Florida. Hello, man. Hello. Uh, Hello. You on Facebook all the time. It's good to see you, man. Yeah, very active. It's great. It's very active. I want to show my chart real quick. I don't know if you guys can see it. Squad goals. Nice. Oh, oh I love that. that. Squad goals. I like it. Yes. Yeah. You got to tell Nestor. You have to tell me where you got that shirt. My daughter. So many people who follow the show know this. My daughter Lindsay is a writer producer. And she uh, gets high. She does write scripts and things. And she and her comedy partner wrote a uh, a, 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 a a a pilot and a script. It didn't get shot, but it was a script for CBS called Squad Goals. And nice. it's never died. And people are like really into it. So we gotta. I, I gotta get a copy of that shirt. Right. I, I gotta get that from my daughter Lindsay. I honestly don't remember. Jason she was the girl who asked Brandon to do the hooky loud. The same. same <laughs> I remember seeing that episode. You guys talked about that. Um, yeah. I honestly don't remember what website I got it from. It's okay. We'll, um, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. I was just excited to see that. Tell me yeah. about uh, your experience with 90210, man. You're, you're talking about it on Facebook all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. 
Yeah. Um, so I started religiously watching it at nine years old back in 94 in Orlando. So that's the season when um, Tiffany came on. Um, right. I was very excited because I used to watch her Saved by the Bell. So I'm like, oh my gosh, she's going to be on Adam So no, not knowing she was going to be this bad vixen kind of girl. So that threw me off. Like at the end of the episode when she's rolling a joint. And I'm like, oh my God, what is going on here? Larry <laughs> Mullen also arrived that year. He rolled it one handed. He rolled it one handed. No, he wrote he wrote the year before, but we wrote yeah. it that year. That's for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. Originally, I lived in New York, so my sister used to watch Nine Until Mono back then. But I was so young that I didn't really pay attention to it. So when we moved to Florida, I was like, "Well, I'm gonna watch it on my own." So she was already over it. I think she stopped watching when Kelly and Dylan got together. So <laughs> I was like, "Well, I'm gonna watch it." I watch it this from people. Right. So I watched it from the fifth season all the way to the end, and then of course when reruns came on, on as well. Right. Uh, real quick, uh, Diana, um, Caitlin, and Nestor, favorite characters? Um, mine is, was Tori Spelling. Of course, Dylan was a, he was my Hollywood husband. So, and my free one, my free one had I met oh, him. Oh, 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 your hall pass. I like yes, that. yes, that's it. Okay. That's it. And then like Tori Spelling. And, yeah. and I'm a Brenda Dylan couple fan for sure. Um, and Caitlin, for you? I love them all. It's so hard. But um, definitely Tori, Donna, um, definitely my favorite. And Dylan, too. If I have yes. to pick one. Yeah, each, yeah. Sure. And Nestor. <laughs> well, I'm a sucker for the bad girls. I love the drama. So <laughs> my favorite's Valerie. And although a lot of people hate Gina, I love Gina because I love Vanessa Martell. She's one of my favorite actors. Fantastic actor. Yes. Yes. Okay, so Melanie, we don't have Georgia. Wait, what about Heather? We didn't hear Heather, Pete. Heather was with us earlier, yes? Yeah. Oh, yes. I grew character. up in Georgia. So oh, very good. Cool. 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 Yeah. Georgia. That's right. You were in Georgia. We have Georgia. No, I... <laughs> I will tell you, I Luke Perry is it for me. Numero uno, uh, out of the girls, I was a Kelly girl. Um, I did not know until this podcast started that there were people out there who were Brenda Dillon people. All my circle of friends <laughs> growing up was Dylan Kelly, and I did not know that until a year and a half ago. And my friend, my best friend, lives in Chicago. She didn't know either, and I had to tell her that we're the minority, and she didn't believe me. So, all right, hey, look who hey, it is. Malik, how you doing? From Georgia. Hey, how are you? Can you hear us, Georgia? Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh! I'm so sorry. I can't. I can't hear you guys that well. So just talk. Just tell, just, just tell us about your love for 90210. Where it started? How you started watching? Yep. So I, I'm originally from Philly, South Philly, and uh, I started watching 90210 at about age of ten. I was in a small private Catholic school, um, and uh, predominantly black neighborhood. Um, and sorry, people are calling me like right now. Sorry, right, uh, yeah. you're famous. Anyways, um, this this is this is so cool. By the way, um, my favorite characters would be Kelly Taylor and Steve Sanders. And wow. let me just say yeah. this: the thing that intrigued me really? most about the show, kid from 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 uh, South Philly, grew up in a predominantly black environment. Uh, in the housing development, I was intrigued with everything. And so all of, this, all of the imagery of the beach and Rodeo Drive and all that stuff was so fascinating to me. The red car that Kelly Taylor drove, like, it was so dope. And in fact, when my college counselor asked me what college I wanted to go to, it was, it was, it was UCLA. UCLA. And I knew nothing about universities and colleges. California, but that was it for me. And here's the other thing. I don't know about y'all, but I was also intrigued by the house. Like Kelly Taylor's house, I was infatuated with. I loved like the exterior of that house and Steve Sanders' house too. I was also infatuated with. 
Um, so, so uh, Larry and, and Charlie, you guys are you guys are fantastic. Peter, you are the man for doing this. Thanks, man. Um, and one other thing I would say is, you know, I'm, 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 I like the, the reboot, but I wanted a traditional reboot. And I'm wondering, Charlie and Larry, if you have any power, any influence whatsoever to get our folks on the team just a little bit longer, something. If you have any power and influence in Hollywood, Rand, can you make that happen? Uh, no, we have no influence. Radio plays. We can't make that <laughs> we got to try to do these radio plays, though. We are, we, are, we are talking to do some, you know, these uh, Story Slam radio plays. So there is some, right. there is some hope, we think. There's some yeah, things, there's have, things. There's things coming down the line. I'm sure. I'm sure. Right? You know, you never know. You know. I think we we pulled certainly lots of the cast together. So it's never. You know. I know it's Ian always says it's the gift that keeps on giving. So maybe it'll just give correctly. I'm day. sure something yeah, will but, pop up. But it was a fun, it was this story slam is a fun thing. And Larry and I got to put words in Kelly Taylor's mouth, David Silver's mouth, um, Dylan, Dylan McKay. McKay's mouth, Brandon Walsh, Cindy Walsh, yeah, Brandon it's, Walsh. So it's, it's going to be a fun time when we, David Silver, of course, it's yes. going to be a fun time when we do them live. Yes, so, we do a little. I mean, uh, thank, you know. thanks to you, Mallard, for uh, getting into the show. All right, amazing, guys, amazing. we are going to move this group. Diana Lowe, thank you so much, and thank you for all the promotion that you did of this event. We really yeah. appreciate it here. And Diane Kennedy. And Diane Kennedy, love you so much. You've done so Bye, much guys. for my Bye, generation. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Nestor and, and okay. Malik. And Bye, Mountain everybody. And Central. Hi, guys. Mountain Plain Central, yes. Uh, yes, Melanie, Mountain Plain Mountain Central. Plain Central, yes. Yep. It's a 22. My grandfather bought it for me in Tulsa. Pretty cool, huh? From Fort Atkinson all the way down south to Abilene, there wasn't a saloon he hadn't drunk at. Now all the grandparents are back in Oklahoma. We're having a Thanksgiving right out here in the woods, just like the pilgrims and the Indians, right, kids? Did you know that in a little town off Interstate 80 called Culker City, Kansas, there is the largest ball of twine in the world? There's a bus leaving for St. Louis in an hour. I'll be spending the summer at my grandparents in Oklahoma. You'll have fun. Name one thing fun about Oklahoma. I bet you not one girl there has ever met a California stud before. Okay. Amazing. We're missing people, yes, Melanie? We are. We are missing Oklahoma. We are missing Iowa, Missouri, and Nebraska. Well, so missing... Texas and Kansas is here, so I'm going to raise my dinner focus. box to them and welcome them. Sure. I'm going to take my little break now. I've been uh, doing this, and uh, I've been. Um, I need to replenish, and I'm going to see. Uh, I'm going to hold my breath and turn on the score of the Dodger game and hope we are still in the ball game. All right, Bye, everybody. Okay. I'll see you later. Thank you for being here. Bye. Charles, thank you. We'll see you in a little bit, Charles. Uh, just hey. stay there, Charles. And just, it, we, we won't put you back on. Uh, just stay there and then come back to it when you're ready. Okay. Let's see here. We have a couple of really cool things for this group, right, Larry? Yeah. This one, I think, is going to be like – this one's going to be the mic drop for this group, I I think. Personally, Ooh, I'm like okay. so stoked about about this, this. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about now. This yeah, shout out. Someone, I even texted you we should, we should set it up then, I think. But Let's see if you know who it Missouri's is. Missouri's not here, though, unfortunately. Wish, is Missouri coming? I am texting. It's a friend of Rory's. Um, we're hoping Missouri will be here, yes. I'm okay, we have on. Oklahoma. We're still waiting for we, that other Oklahoma Nebraska, surprise. What's up with that? I emailed Nebraska's him. not in the mix. Iowa. Okay, Nebraska's out. Okay, so we need I can Iowa. represent for both. I'm on the state line. Oh, there, there you go. go. Great. Great. Love amazing. it. All right, but let's drop the mic first. Hey, this is Jason Wiles, a.k.a. Colin Robbins from 90210 back in the day. Today, I want to give a big shout out to Trisha from Ferguson, Missouri, a fellow Missourian like me. Mwah! Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being a fan of the show. And uh, lots of love coming your way. KC, Missouri, baby, and Ferguson. That's awesome. Jason, we have, yes. Yes. We had hard Trish to get on our podcast, so. but he wanted to, he loves the fans. And love him. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and then we have this one. Hi, 
Greetings from Los Angeles. My name is Marcus Espinoza. I play Jesse, Andrea's husband. Um, and I want to uh, extend a, a special uh, hello to Melinda Berg in Austin, Texas. Melinda, as a fellow Texan, please do me a favor. Keep Austin weird. Keep it really weird. It's one of the great cities on the planet and it needs to stay weird. All right, guys. Cheers. Right. Yeah, what, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Melinda, let's talk about the weird of Austin, Texas, or just uh, Texas. And uh, what is it like watching 90210 in, in, in that area? Or, or was it like? Well, to be honest, I'm actually a New York transplant. Yeah. So I grew up in New York, upstate New York, moved here uh, nine years ago. So I have to ask you where in upstate New York is. I uh, on you. <laughs> Hudson Valley area. Okay, so, cool. That's beautiful. Beautiful yeah. area. But like a lot of people that moved to Austin, we come from New York, California. So it's kind of a mixture of people here now. Um, I did not grow up in Texas, but I'm glad I'm here. And I haven't really met a lot of 902 and O fans here. Um, <coughs> but yeah, Austin is, is a weird place and we want to keep it that way. That's right. Uh, I'm, I'm just north of Austin. So tell me about your love of 902 and O. So I was seven when the show premiered, um, and my parents, rightfully so, did not want me to watch the show. <laughs> so I kind of came into the show late. Thankfully, um, FX Network, which I think is now was the CW, became the CW, showed reruns every day. So I would come home from school when I was, I guess, around 13. So this was around 1996, because it was the sixth season. Right. Um, and I would tape episodes, I would tape the reruns on my VHS, and I... I wish I still had those tapes, but I don't. I remember the first episode I saw on reruns was um, the episode where Dylan and Brenda break up. So, yeah, you no, know, the REM song was playing, and that had me hooked oh, because yeah. I was I was a huge REM fan. So, losing my religion was like my favorite song. And then all of a sudden, they had this yeah. breakup scene. Um, so that's the first memory I really have of the show. But I started watching live episodes in the sixth season, and to this day, the sixth season is my favorite show. Uh, ser- uh, season so right. I'm, I'm glad jason was the one that was on oh, there the shout out. Yeah. I, I i have a son oh, named colin and I, oh, I, like, uh, I like to say and i have a son named dylan as well so oh, uh, that. <laughs> yeah so well cool. i just want to let you know larry colin wow cool to well, see him I colin know. i'll let maggie Good say feedback. it no yeah i mean <laughs> yeah, we've been trying colin. to get him for a long time it's been very elusive he looks great he's on this week on ncis he was on a two port the last two weeks I think. Mm-hmm. yeah we well hopefully well. he'll join us here at yeah. the podcast and so. we'll be able to do a colin robbins episode and really dive into all yeah that. really yeah. it was uh you know again we always say yeah Jason, to serve the if, show. You're li- if you're listening serve the show and come on to the podcast and do this, do a full yeah. episode with us. Yes. Yeah, I mean, because his character had to serve the show, we really had to make him a bad guy because he was never going to, you know, we always had, you know, Brandon and Kelly in mind that season. So, yes. So someone had to kind of occupy Kelly. And, <laughs> and he certainly did. He got her, got her hooked on. Yes, drugs. he did. Yeah. All right, let's talk good. to Amanda. Amanda, so you're on the state line of Kansas and, and where now? Nebraska. Missouri, actually. Missouri. Missouri. I'm in Lenexa, Kansas, but I was born and raised on the Missouri side, which is just like 20 minutes. Oh, you're, we're so. covered then. We're covered. So perfect. perfect. Kansas City Chiefs fans, Check. Royals, all that. So <laughs> yeah. So tell me about watching uh, 90210 back in the day. So I remember I was 13 years old and um, I heard about it coming on and I just sat in my living room and my parents saying, you shouldn't be watching this. This is not appropriate for you. These kids are not high school kids. And I was hooked after Brenda and Dylan met when he was underneath that car and popped out. Uh, 13 years old, and I watched it every week loyally. And um, then after I was able to start taping them on the VHS, and I ended up taping the very last, I cried, the very last episode of the 10th season, Donna and David's wedding. I taped it and watched it because it wasn't on for years after that. And I would just pop it in and watch it every once in a while and have a good yeah. cry. And then it started that. having reruns. And so I've, I've been a fan since day one when this show first aired. I think it was on a Wednesday night or something late. <laughs> right. So. And, yeah, that's great. And uh, for Cindy. Did your, I just wonder, did your friends watch it too? Or were you watching it by yourself? Or I was one of the first of my friends watching it. 
actually. early adopter. But then you got the other friends to watch. Yeah, it I did. Um, I did get other others watching it because I I think I just caught the first. You know. And what about so, brothers and sisters? Were they watching it too? No, my brother was younger, so mm. no. no <laughs> He's yeah. three years younger, so he never watched it. I think I was just on that tail end of that thir being 13 and watching it and being interested. Yeah. Oh, and Cindy in Oklahoma. Hi, Can you guys see me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I forgot my headphones. That's okay. You're oh, good to we go. We can hear yeah. you fine. You're good. Oh, yeah. Peter, I think you know my sister. Okay. Who's your Kelly. sister? Kelly. Oh, Kelly. Yes. Okay. <laughs> she told me about this podcast. So we started watching it together. Yes, yeah, she loves you. And Melanie, you're I, and just a doll. You have the prettiest right. smile ever. Larry, Thank this you. person said that Thanks. I was adorable last week. Kelly. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Well, that you know, you need that. Yeah, definitely. That's my sister. Yeah. Um, so She's we started watching it together. We're a year apart. So we were 11 and 12. And we grew up um, private Catholic school. My parents are older. So we weren't allowed to watch it. So we would sneak it on. Right. Where, were, where, where were you? Where, where, where were you? Um, we, I live in Oklahoma City. Okay. Um, we're from Oklahoma. She lives in Michigan now. So we would sneak it on um, when they weren't paying attention because so the war was going on and there was right. nothing else yeah, right. to watch. So that's uh, how we got hooked. And so then all my friends started watching it and we would go to the salon when we were older, you know, and get the Kelly Taylor haircut. <laughs> right. And she would wear like these little little sweater vests, like like a like a tank top with a sweater over it, you know. And so we would get the same sweaters that she had because we just thought, you know, it was so trendy. That's great. That's awesome. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, I know Chuck always talks about uh, about the war being a big moment in in nine hundred two and O's. Uh, history do you guys have any questions for for larry or how about for favorite characters for each of you melinda uh brandon probably or dylan both of those and i also i'm a big susan keats fan as well oh, god i emma, saw her in the emma coffee there and i was like god i love susan keats i'm surprised we didn't reach out to her to do this yes yeah i'm a cop we like her. <laughs> yeah um uh, what about you amanda i am a kelly and brandon fan and for you, Cindy? The royal couple. The royal couple. Yes. I consider them. Um, Val, all the way. Val is my favorite. Red oh. and Val. You guys love that. The bad girl. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she, as, we're, as we're watching these again, I mean, how bad she is and how really broken as a human being she is really comes through. I'm just amazed. Uh, we really we really had her do lots of despicable stuff besides selling David to <laughs> ginger and stuff like that. Well, let's, that was a good let's one. mix it up a little bit, Larry. What do you oh no, he was there and then he was oh there. he was. <laughs> oh okay. okay. It's okay. It's... Uh, um anyway, so do you guys have any questions for Larry about uh the time on the on the uh, that you know anything about the show or anything like that? I'm curious if you have any characters that you wrote for but did not make the show like that stick out in your mind good question what do you mean uh, characters that never made the screen yeah huh. that you uh, thought up or wrote about and just they turned it so. down i don't think so no um i remember that happened to another writer because i you know i was the one who rejected it but it was a and i think they might have done it later it was a leprechaun character Pete, is that true <laughs> they did a leprechaun <laughs> i know that one of the writers pitched a leprechaun star and went eh, Things he says, no, but you have to. It. <laughs> no, it's fascinating. No, it's not happening. No. Uh, no, I think I don't think so. Um, that's an interesting question, though. You know, it, I say if if there was, it was used somewhere else in another series. Because no good thoughts usually as a writer, you kind of have you know your little bag of, of box of, of of stuff, and you know you don't want to waste any of it, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, anything else? Any other questions that you guys have for? Let's just mix this up here. I have hmm. one. I do too. But wait. <laughs> months. Wait a months. second. Ryan yeah. Thomas Brown. <laughs> <laughs> it's up? months time. I know you're not in Washington and this is a different section, but we needed to see some. We needed some months time, right? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm chilling on my day off. Um, in my robe, actually. I mean, I'm literally chilling. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, man, this is 31 years since uh, 902 and 0. Uh, what are what are your thoughts on that, man? 
Uh, <laughs> that's a long time. Um, hold on, let me turn this TV down a little bit. So uh, thank you, thank you. Sure. Hey, 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 nice. Chuck, what's the score? What's the score? Well, I was waiting. I was waiting. The Dodgers had the bases loaded with one out. The guy kept their pitcher, kept walking people. It looked all good. We had Trey Turner up at this plate. It was only one out. It was three and two count. And he hit into a double play. So, oh, wow. um, class, you know, <laughs> this, the, you, this may be the last happy. I'm, I'm sharing. My, this could be <laughs> that I'm sharing my last happy baseball times with Ryan and Cindy and Amanda and Melinda. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might be a very, uh, you know, in fact, Larry knows this because I know how he thinks. The, the congratulations to the Boston Red Sox for winning their game to the Yankees yesterday. But That's the right. moment that they're out of the playoffs, he's just about football. So, you know, hello, Los Angeles Chargers, the new powerhouse <laughs> in the West Coast, you know, if that Whatever. If it comes to pass. Yeah. So anyway, we, yeah, let's not talk but about I was listening. I, I actually didn't oh, watch yeah, on television. Yeah. suck. <laughs> they did a good job. They did a good job. Oh, Ryan, right. I'm so Fuck. sorry. Yeah, yeah, they got there. They got close. I was so rooting for the Mariners if they were going to knock out my A's to at least get in there and so close, but yet so far. Yes. yes. Every uh, but I was listening to Cindy talk about her 902 and 0 experience and all that. Jenny Gar stuff made me smile, you know, with the haircut and all of that. The haircut, yeah. yeah. But you're so I'm, I'm curious with Melinda and Cindy and Amanda. You know, you're part of the of the country. It was a place that we did not get very good ratings. So were you guys kind of alone in your fandom, or or is it just the Nielsen families weren't counting your areas? <laughs> I think everything in Texas is bigger, so I'm not sure why that uh, didn't yeah. work out for me. <laughs> Everyone well, I knew. Were, you know, Fox owned a station in Houston, and boy, Houston didn't. We were not loved in Houston. Really? Conserv loved conservative, conservative area. Conservative. Back then, at least, yeah. Yeah. When I was watching, I didn't know anybody really watching. It was me, and then slowly, over that summer, you know, people started watching. Uh huh. Yeah. Charles, you've talked about the the war being a big part of the nine hundred two one zero, the changing of the of the um, the ratings, right? Yeah, you know, it was something that you know these companies. If you think about it, Fox. I mean, you've always heard this metaphor that now people use. I had never heard it used before, but when I was doing it, the little show that could, and everybody calls themselves that if they didn't have a full license fee, but you know, kind of felt that way because. Look at CBS, ABC, NBC ruled America. That's they right. were the three big ones, and we're we're this and, and we're part of an upstart network with a show that they didn't think even fit their brand. What the upstart network wanted to be, and and the interesting thing is, is that when the war happens, it's kind of like the great leveler. Yeah. It's like they don't have their uh, the you know way. marketing. Uh, you know, influence and, and, and power at that point were all equal and, you know, all, all covering the war, except maybe what you'd expect from Fox, they're going to play by their own rules and right. they're going to show their, 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 their um, shows. And the, fortunately, the shows they wanted to show were ours. And some of them were some of our best ones. So it was all a good time. All right. And look who's here is David. Hey, David. Uh can, nice. can you guys hear me? We yeah, can we hear you. Can. Yeah. All right, I was having some some difficulties here. Sorry about that. Where oh, are you good. coming in from, David? Sorry to be tardy for the party, but um, I'm coming <laughs> in. I'm currently in Florida right now, but I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri. So oh, oh, I'll be representing. Oh, Missouri. you're killing me, dude! <laughs> <laughs> so I, knew, I was worried about the Cardinals three weeks ago, and here it is. <laughs> uh, again, congratulations. So, I'll take it. I'm a casual at best when it comes to most ball sports, but being from St. Louis is such a huge sports city. I mean, we got the Cardinals, the right. Blues, we had the Rams, you know, that's kind of a sore spot for us. <laughs> I'll take well, it. We're, we're LA. We'll steal anything from anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like the Chargers from San Diego. <laughs> had a great okay. time doing that too, Melanie. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, Kristen McIsaac says Ryan looks great. So there's, yes. there's that. 
two shout outs today. Well, of course I do. I'm in my robe. <laughs> <laughs> but before we get to David, Ryan, I wanted to get you to finish that question. 31 years later, what is your thoughts on this all these years later? And um, I'll tell you what, uh, just within the last couple of years since COVID happened, I have never in my life met so many 90210 fans. Mm. I mean, I get friends requests out the Yazoo. I try to accept them all. If I miss any, I'm sorry. I'm busy, um, but I will get to you. Um, right. I think it's. I think it's great, man. It's. It's. It's people like all of you guys sitting here that that just keep the memory of the show rolling, and it's so. It's so awesome, and to have been a part of that, to be able to play, you know, a, a character on that show is just. I, I love it. I just, it just it makes me feel good. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for bringing up old storylines. Thank you for making up new ones. It's, it's right. Great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and for David, I mean, where's your nine hundred two one zero fandom? Um, were you a super fan or a fan of it? You've watched it. Walk so, so, so here's the thing with me, right? So you just mentioned what 30, 31 years. Yeah. I'm 27 years old, right? <laughs> this, is, this is kind of the beauty of kind of where we are in society. Uh, 27 year old like me, that show came out in 1990. I mean, right. that was premiered. I was born in 94. Oh, wow. Um, so oh, I'm, yeah. So I'm very, I'm very new to it, but through like streaming uh, services like Hulu and stuff like that, you can Hulu, pretty yeah. much catch everything. And, um, I think that's where it started for me is I learned it. Uh, a friend kind of told me about it. He's in the in the movie and film industry. He told me to check the show out. I was in a bit of a show hole. So like my favorite other shows that I normally watch were either out of season or on hiatus. And then this was referred to me. So I kind of started, started watching it. And, and initially, even me being 27, like the amount that resonated to me, like almost immediately, was like I was blown away from it. I mean, I was blown away by it because I think I went into it with the mindset of like even other shows like that I've that I grew up watching, like Friends and stuff that have that like cult following. And like even though I watched it a little bit when I was a kid, um, nowadays when I look back and I watch it, there are certain things that I just feel like are are, are missing or just it doesn't necessarily resonate with me as much. But then like immediately within the first two minutes. Of watching just the intro i was like this show is clearly ahead of its time and like it was incredible like looking back at some of some of the th the themes relationship dynamics cultural dynamics everything that was immediately just out there as if it was just like a normal day in 1990 california i was like yo like you don't see that in some shows today and that's what that's what really kind of hooked me in it kept my it piqued my interest and it just caused me to want to kind of dig in. So I'm still fairly new, but I'm still avidly watching it in my free Fantastic. time. Well, That's thank amazing. you very much, David. I, I, hey. I'm just sorry you don't get to hear the original music with the with the shows that you. Uh, are the original singing. music was the best. <laughs> <laughs> the best. Hey, I, I love I love me some old school jams. So if you guys want to send me a, a sound, <laughs> I'll get you the. Uh, I'll get you Doctor Pete could do it. Yeah, yeah. and, Pete could and, and hey. Stuff. I need to mention, David, you are a UFC fighter and a friend Ooh. of Rory Karf. Is that Rory correct? Karf. Yes. yes oh, another yes. Rory. Um, and you fought in South Dakota, which was a state that we're deficient in for this show. So we are also counting you as our South Dakota representative. Okay. Okay. I'll, there. I'll, Is that I'll cool? Take it. I, I'll okay. take it. I grew up uh, wrestling my entire life. And I was on the national team and traveled all around. We, we did training camps up at SDSU. Um, often, so I'll, I'll take it. You know, if South Dakota <laughs> wants to accept me and bring me in, I'll take it. Great, you're an honorary South Dakota. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome, Ryan. I'm curious. Do you have a, any memory of set of being on set that will always stick out with you after you know we're you know from the time that you were on the show? Man, there was uh, there was so many of them. I mean. One of the best, though, that comes to mind is when uh, I'm showing up for work one day. I, don't, I forget what episode we were filming, but um, Luke had come pulling up behind me and parks right next to me and gets out and out of his truck, hop, uh, hop out of Pop Billy Pig. And I'm, <laughs> like, I'm like, really, Luke? Pop Billy Pig? He's like, they're great pets, man. And <laughs> just walks off to his dressing room. It was great. Um, but the one that that really stands up um, 
is probably when uh, the Brian Setzer Orchestra came in. We did the swing dancing episode. Yeah. Um, when we were we were filming and we took a break, took a smoke break, and uh, all of a sudden they started jamming out inside and they were playing the Stray Cat Strut. And we all put our smokes out and ran inside and the Brian Setzer Orchestra ended up doing like a 20 minute show for us. Oh, that's amazing. During a break. And it was just the most incredible thing, man. Cause I grew up, I grew up in the seventies. So I'm a straight cats fan. So when I heard that straight cat strut, I was like, Oh boy. <laughs> you know, it was great, man. I love that. Yeah. All right, Melanie, are we ready to move on from this group? Do you think we've gotten? This I think call? so. We're a little early, but uh, hey, shout out to Mountain Desert West. Your call time six forty-five. We're a little early, so hop on now. We're gonna. Um, I have a question. Go ahead, Cindy. Cindy, 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 Cindy. Cindy. You know, there's there's a new shirt in the store. I'm a Pete. Make sure you tell your sister about that. <laughs> I will. She saw uh, the other day. She told me. Yeah. Um, so my friends and I have always talked about this and we don't know where it originated from. And they're like, you got to ask this question. Go so when Tiffany came on, she used to wear her jeans at the beginning undone at the top. And we're like, well, is this a trend we don't know about? This is you know what I'm talking about? I, yes, absolutely. I think she started. I, she, that was just her thing. I mean, she just started doing it. Larry, no, we, we have should, to ask we, Molly Campbell. Yeah, I was going to say, Larry, we should say we had Diane or on early, Diane or on earlier, but Molly Campbell, of course, is a friend of the show yeah. that we love very much. Well, as she, also, she also was the wardrobe lady for uh, wardrobe uh, mistress for uh, right. And 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 if Tiffany uh, it would only would only really you know realize how earnest Pete is in his affection for the character she played. She would be part of this universe, and you could ask her that question directly. We've but wondered it's, that it's for not years. To be yet. We well, can't get I, her on, and no, I won't it, help because it, I. It, it uh, became a signature of her character. It really became a little signature in a lot of ways. Uh, that, yeah. That, yeah. yeah, it would be very interesting to hear her talk. Well, but I'd like to say we wrote that. You know, the character has, has does not have the top button of her jeans. <laughs> but I, uh, I will, no, I I will say. I will say, as as the youngest one here, as we know, it's like we always say trends recycle themselves. So, um, Cindy, if you see some kids walking around here with the the top part of their jeans unbuttoned in the next couple of years, you can be. I don't like, know where hey, it came you from. Yeah. You want to you know? know. And you can give them a history lesson. Uh, I'll yeah. I'll sometimes wear like my little dangly earring every now and again, and I have some of my older friends would be like, "Yo, you look like such and such from this show," and I'm like, "Hold on, what? Like, can you, can you, can you, give, me, can you give me a lesson here?" And uh, I'm sure we'll probably see that coming around again soon, sometime. Uh, no doubt. Hey, are you fighting? Not actively still, David. Are you still? Are you fighting? Are you competing? I literally am still soaked in sweat from training. I'll be uh, I'll be fighting in like two and a half weeks, actually back home in St. Louis. Nice. So I'm just kind of gearing up for for that, and this is kind of a nice little mental break to kind of you know get my oh, mind cool. off fighting for a little bit. So right, I appreciate it. Yeah, so thanks for joining us. I know you're busy. All right, we're gonna jump into the next group. We're gonna say goodbye to everybody hey, here. Yes, yes. thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. everybody, for being yeah. here. And and um, Schneider Bach for you, if it's just yeah. us in, in the next group while we're waiting for everybody to get in here, we'll just be the four of us and we'll, we'll talk. Yeah, let's chill for a couple minutes and exactly. uh, give them time to all come in. So, uh, okay, we'll, Cindy, we'll say hi to Kelly for me. Okay. I will. Don't worry about it. You can sleep till Utah. And there's an article in here about whitewater rafting on the Colorado River. Best way to see the Grand Canyon. What do you think? <sighs> yeah, what's up? What's up? What's up? Steve, it's Brent. Pack your bags. We're going to Vegas. Vegas? Why? Are you telling me that Valerie Malone hold her cookies all the way up to Reno? Let's see. Well, he's been in Provo and uh, Portland, and even Reno had the privilege. And they had to make an emergency landing in Denver. She came from a little town somewhere outside of Albuquerque. I've got to go there. Where? To New Mexico. Welcome to the 90210-a-thon. <laughs> we are the in list? our uh, third hour almost, huh? We are in our third hour. Yeah, um, that, that, where are my guys? Where's Monus? Where's Cedar City, Utah? Where's... We right, There's Albuquerque. Got Albuquerque. Got Albuquerque. Got Albuquerque. Yeah. Yeah. Albuquerque. Yeah. 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 Yep. Nice we are missing a couple. 
We are. And while we're here, though, we're here, so I'm reaching yes, my toast to you. I thank you very much with a, uh, a, a Avery, uh, a bottle of Avery. Which was uh, which is my son's name and brewed in Boulder, Colorado, which is just a hop, skip, and a jump from the area that you're all from. I've been to Wyoming, I've been to Nevada, I've been to New Mexico. Great states, all three. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. We have Nevada and we have New Mexico here, so I can show you this. Hello, everybody. Jill Novick, aka Tracy Galian, here. I just wanted to give a special shout out to Roberta Fodder from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And a thank you to all the fans, because without you, none of this would be possible. Peace. Great to see That's you. That's so awesome. Aww. Chuck is like, who is that? <laughs> Season seven, Chuck. <laughs> Date it, she dated it, Brandon. If she's here, if she's here, she's meaningful. I know that. No, she Absolutely. She was much loved, yeah. Um, okay, and then there's this one. Hi guys, Zach Throne here. Uh, you also know me as Howard from Beverly Hills 90210. And I'm coming to you live from my house in Las Vegas, Nevada, 89123. And I want to give a special shout out to Crystal. Hi, Crystal. Thank you for being such a big fan of the show. And thank you for being cool enough to be from the state of Nevada. Because we are onto something. I'm actually not from here. I'm not as cool as you. Uh, I moved here 10 years ago. And my impression of Las Vegas and Nevada, I honestly would never want to live anywhere else. It was the only city I've ever lived in where I never wanted to go find out what it's like to live somewhere else. So I guess I'm guess you're stuck with me. So thanks, Crystal. Thanks everybody for being fans of the show, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Oh yeah, our, our good buddy Zach. <laughs> He's playing on the strip and the uh, of the uh, divas of rock and roll. If you want to see him, he's playing bass for that. I've been seeing it. it's a very good show. Oh, okay. hey. All right, Lotus. What's, what's, what state is that? Arizona. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh yes, oh, Arizona. We have Utah yeah, popping in now. Andrew and Stephanie. And oh, Andrew and Stephanie, yeah. there's Cedar City. You guys got to get a little oh. closer in the camera. You can't see oh, your nice yeah. faces. <laughs> we have a nice hey, we'll you are. Like there you go. Well, wow. Just a little cool. bit to, to tell everybody how I actually know Monus. Uh, well, he, the man is uh, really interesting in so many ways. He used to do a podcast. We met because he wanted to interview me about the food of the peach pit. We talked oh, about that. That's how we first met. And talking about food, the man makes a cheesecake to die for. Uh, actually does it. And, and Andrew is the one person who showed me I don't know if you've ever seen a dinosaur footprint, but it's a it's quite a, a, a you know a seminal moment. And Andrew showed me that in in uh, the outskirts of Zion National Park with his uh, with his gal Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. <laughs> Uh, good to see you, Andrew and Stephanie. I know Charles sent you some homework, an episode to watch, right? Yeah, I did watch it. That was my first ever 90210 episode I've ever watched. <laughs> um, it was the Rolling Stones episode, right? It was. When I met Chuck, he was telling me about it. and Yeah, so I said, well, I got to watch that one. Because the uh, deal you... is, is that the Rolling Stone episode, is, as I think Mona's Katie, Crystal, and Roberta would know, it's really close to our heart. I mean, it's it was our favorite production. Larry acted in it. Uh, Pete and I met because of it. Right. So it really kind of puts this whole podcast in in perspective. You know. Yeah, it definitely does. I mean, and it's, it's did you a, like it? Did it hold up? Yeah, it was it was really good. And I told Stephanie, I was surprised I, I liked it as much as I did. So I think I'm going to have to uh, binge watch the the whole. It's the whole series, yeah. I, I think so. I mean, because let's face it, you're not watching Padres baseball anymore. <laughs> Sore subject, hey. Charles. Sore subject. Sorry, yeah. you, know, you know what his hey, what, what's going on tonight right? with the Dodgers? Uh -oh. Do you, know, you know what his email is? I do, actually. I do. I'm a Padres fan, so that's a real guy there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, All right. Let's ask. I'm curious for Monis. Um, you mm -hmm. had interest in the Peach Pit menu. So obviously you've watched 90210 a few times, yes? Absolutely, yes. Um, how large uh, Chuck to Charles is right that, you know, um, my podcast, we review fictional restaurants and TV and film, and one of the most <laughs> iconic of all time is, is the Peach Pit. 
And, you know, I mean, even going off of Melanie's questions, you know, I mean, one of my, the, one of the episodes that's dear to my heart, actually, too, is Fame is Where You Find It, which is when Shannon Doherty uh, plays Laverne, plays this uh, very, you know, a a woman with a lot of uh, spunk, if you will, you know, I know the, um, just like, you know, and, and this gum chewing a uh, waitress. She uh, she's taking the place of her brother because her brother um, has you know a chance at fifteen seconds of fame, <laughs> and it really shows. I think for me, and I remember even watching as a young kid. But even going back, it really shows the importance of this hub, you know, and and even talking to. I mean, you know, and really in a TV show, it is essential to have a hub that's outside of say the house that's outside of the high school that's outside of the college it is this restaurant and even to piggyback you know and to even uh, double down on the importance of the peach pit there is this episode called the pit and the pendulum right. where you know the pretty much the community um in you know in this beverly hills community in this world comes up and stands up against the corporate big man if you will to save this hub, this livelihood, and and that is really the essence. And I mean, even talking to Charles, um, we just love that it was based um, off of, say, his love of the apple pan. And for those not familiar with, uh, you know, the Los Angeles area, the apple pan is a very old school uh, burger diner. They have almost like this U-shaped countertop, and it's a very simple menu, very similar to um, In and Out, but it it is. It is that hub, you know, it, it is old school. Every every walk of life knows about it, whether you are from Beverly Hills or Century City, where you're from the right side of the tracks or the wrong side of the tracks. And that really resonated with me. And, you know, when we even had Charles on the Restaurant Fiction podcast, it, it made, you know, he brought this essence where the Peach Pit was a character in and of itself, even outside of the characters. Right. You know, I just have to say to Larry MP, he's been saying the word, and Melody, he's been saying the word peach pit so much. It's taken <laughs> great restraint for me to not go. Yeah, we have to keep it Yeah, the But I won't do that. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> it's just brilliant. I love it I love when you do that. that. It's yeah. it's one of the greatest hits. Okay, well, so look, we have I, some Liz from Colorado. You're gonna say Liz from Colorado. I know you. What's up? How are you? Hi. Yes. Hey. How are you? I'm can good. Can you hear me? I can hear you yes. great. Yeah. I'm drinking a, okay, a brew. By I'm the way, I'm having some tech Colorado. issues. So you guys sound kind of garbled. <laughs> You know what they say to do? What's leave that? the studio. Leave the studio where it says leave studio, and come back in, and you okay. should be okay. Okay. Yeah. Try that. Yeah. Okay. Let's moving moving along to uh, Roberta from Albuquerque. Um, how are things in Albuquerque these days? It's balloon fiesta, so it's amazing. We didn't have the balloon fiesta last year, so it's um, everybody's very excited to see the balloons back in the air. Well, one of Larry's closest right. friends is from Albuquerque. From Pl- Placidus, yeah, from Placidus. Oh, I know Placidus. The Ashes, you might probably know the Ashes. They're very well known. I know everybody, uh, so. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Alex- Alexi Ash, who was a giant non-tunnel fan, I brought her to the set, married Seth Meyers, so they all oh. live in New York now. Oh. Uh, Liz, can you hear us better now? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Beautiful. You sure Sounds can. perfect. Kind of? Okay, so um, oh. going Going back, maybe it might be your headphones. You might want to yeah, just maybe lose, lose, the headphones. lose the headphones. I know uh, I said headphones, but maybe lose them. Lose the headphones. Maybe lose okay, hold on. Yeah, yeah. I bet you that will okay. fix you. Okay, going to Wait. back to Roberta. Okay, um, better now. Oh, good for us. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I wanted to ask you about uh, how did you become an, a nine hundred two one zero fan? Um, I just you know I was like, really young when the show started. Oh, I think I was like 12, 13 years old. Pete? Yeah. I'm just I'm just I think I'm just, she's oh. muted. I who okay. did you Liz, want me or is Roberta? This is Roberta's talking. Roberta. Roberta. Pete, don't lose control. 
Well, because <laughs> I we made it this far. We can't lose control now. I know. We can tell it to Liz. Hold on one second. We should, yeah. Okay. Okay. We we'll should go back Roberta. to Roberta. We'll be yeah. back in a second, Liz. Yes. Okay. Sorry, Liz. Back to Roberta. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, like I've been watching this show all night, and just uh, like everybody else, I started watching in college, and I started watching with my boyfriend at the time, who is now my husband, oh, and it good. was like it was like our date night thing, Ooh, and we I would, like you know. Um, Every week we would watch the show and talk about the characters and I really looked forward to it. And then we got married and we still kept watching it. We moved away and it was just something that that stuck with us. Like we'd meet friends, we'd be like, hey, come on over and watch 90210. I um, think you were crazy when you would say that. <laughs> <laughs> who, are these no. who could watch 90210? Wait, They're from no New way. Mexico. We don't care. Um, oh, and then just totally <laughs> had a resurgence of it because um, my friend Jill, who plays Tracy or who played Tracy, started working at the high school where I teach. And everybody was like, I was such a fangirl. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's Jill Novak and she was on 90210. So started watching it again and watching clips on YouTube. And um, it's just been really fun. Oh, so you know Jill. Did we know that, Larry? I did. Okay, you I did. But I forgot conveniently. <laughs> it's a lot of people that keep trying. No, so I, I beseeched Jill to help us find a New Mexico fan. I said, You probably have you know, people in your drama because she teaches drama in, in Albuquerque. She, That's right. That's That's really right. Sweet. Yeah. yeah, and they were reading her bio, and everybody who's my age, you know, is really like grew up kind of watching the show through college and young mm-hmm. adulthood. We were like, Oh my gosh, like this is the most amazing thing to have her at our high school. So that is cool. That is it, nice. it's cool. Yeah, and the moms that come to open house are all fangirl too. So, yeah. For Crystal, um, how are you? Our good, friend. good. I, I'm really excited about the fact that you just bought Zach on. That was that was really amazing. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for doing that. That was great. Yeah. So, um, Joanna says Christmas shirt is so awesome. So there's. Thank you. I'm yeah. just Thank taking you. it in now. It's pretty. I had crazy. a I had a 90s birthday party last year for my 30th birthday, <laughs> and I had this custom shirt made. And here's 90210. Right there. Uh, There's all my favorite nice. stuff from the nineties. Buffy, the vampire slayer, all of my favorite stuff from the nineties are on there. So very Amazing. cool. We'll be in the show shop very soon, I'm sure. Yeah, well, I have really <laughs> close I have, Larry and I both have close relationships with Vegas. He worked there for a while and working with his friends, the uh the in, in a lounge in a really hot lounge show. And I grew up, my father knew all the, the, the bookies. And so I learned to uh, swim in the, in the pool of the Riviera Hotel when I was five years old. So oh, Vegas yes. has always been a, a place for us, you know. So how about Great. you, Crystal, telling us about how you got into 90210? Um, well, I actually started watching the show when I was nine. Um, I'm younger than a lot of the people on here. So I started watching right when season 10, the first episode of season 10 with my mom. And, um, of course, that was the episode when Kelly shot and killed her rapist. And so it was a very <laughs> controversial episode. And I know that was before your time um, or after your time, Larry and Char- Charles. So I'm sorry about that. But um, <laughs> so, yeah, that was actually one of the first episodes I remember watching. And one of the things that stood out to me about that episode was the end when they all met up at the beach and, you know, how they all just kind of came together. You know, Kelly was going through this serious life changing event and right. they all sat there with her and they were just like, listen, we're here for you. We're your friends. We love you. We got your back. And that was one of the main things that like drew, drew me into the show. Mm-hmm. And then I remember watching it all the way to the end of season 10, which is my favorite episode when Donna and David get married. They're my favorite couple. So I love that. episode. Um, and then so the show ended then about six years after that, there was a channel on Cox called Soapnet. And right. I started watching the show from there. And then that's kind of how I got caught up. And I continue to watch it over and over and over again until SoapNet wasn't around anymore. So I've seen the show I, countless amount of times over and over again. And it's just one of the things that I love so much about it is just the friendships. Like that's what really drew me into it. It's just how much they all love each other. No matter what they go through, they love each other. And one of my favorite scenes is in season four. And I believe the episode is A Pig is a Dog is a Man. And there's the scene when Dylan comes to the Walsh house and, um, you know, you guys all know what scene I'm probably talking about, but um, Dylan comes to the Walsh house and he's really upset with Brandon about the whole Kelly situation. And, you know, they get into it and Steve is in the background with the hilarious commentary and he's talking about what's the sex freak and everything like that in the back. And 
So then, you know, of course, Dylan ends up punching Steve by accident, and Steve's on the ground. Right the, about right the nose. Nose. <laughs> you know, yeah. The nose, I think, you know, something he really did punch then, him too, as I remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And one of the great things about that is like when they get up at the end and Cindy's like, hey, I got, I can't remember if she said lunch or brownies or whatever she said, yeah, but exactly. when they get up at the end, you know, they hug each other and they walk yeah, in the house and friends, it's like, you know. no matter what they go through, they're still yeah. family. And that's, that's nice. right. Well, from a writer's point of view, what we did is we diffused all that anger with the joke. Yeah. So, right. You know, hmm. but, yeah. you know, part of the thing was in the in the show, which which Chuck really you know helped lay the made the template for. It was emotion, passion, bonding, fun. So the bonding was like one of the cornerstones of the show, which was really important. You know, especially at the end, most shows ended you know with you know some good bonding moments, basically. Definitely. Yeah, I, I remember that thing, the punch. And I think Ian's told the story, am I mistaken, Pete, that, that actually that Luke actually punched him there. I think you're right about that. I, yeah. I still remember no. that. And he said, why did you do that? You punched me. Um, hey, Crystal, I'm curious. You came in watching the later seasons, uh, but then you obviously did the, re-watched everything. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious, did you find yourself – still loving those last couple seasons or did you wind up being like no season four is really great season three is really great or or no, um no, i no. i love the earlier seasons um I, the, the high school ones were really great i love donna martin graduates you know those are all great episodes um i know a lot of people don't really like the older seasons but for me i did feel like they were a little bit more relatable to what i was kind of going through at that time with getting out of college, trying to figure out what you're going to do, you know, stuff like that. So I do appreciate the older seasons, but I also appreciate the earlier seasons. I'm just a fan of the show altogether. That's cool. So I can yes. sit and watch it all the way through and just love everything about it, to be honest. Thanks. Very cool. All right. And so, Katie, let's hear your oh, your, thank your you for comment. Yeah. Where thank are you, Katie? Wyoming? Good to, thank you for being here. Yeah, Wyoming. It really exists. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry I was so elusive for so long. I just, um, I, I've, I've been watching this podcast the entire time, and um, I just thought I'm going to feel terrible if Wyoming doesn't step up, and oh, I well, could have done did. it. So, yeah. Um, in addition, I well, went to college you. in Bozeman, Montana. So I'm Thanks Montana God. for y'all. Okay. You got Montana oh, too. Yeah. We were everything. Uh, <laughs> we are coming. I, we yeah, did I'm from Jackson. Jackson. It's Melanie. But <laughs> yep, you're covered. Yeah. I watched. I watched all through college up there. So, um, I'm from Jackson Hole, which is um, in there part Love of Wyoming, place. I guess. But mm -hmm. um, I grew up. Yep, it's a great place. It's a great yeah. place. It's, it's gorgeous. Lucky to grow gorgeous. up there. Anyhow, um, my sister is 10 years older than me and went to school in Southern California for college, a private university down there. And I remember her coming home and kind of talking about some show. And I was I was 10 in 1990 and um, we couldn't get it. Wasn't wasn't happening where we lived at the time. Um, so my first memory of being able to watch it with a couple of my girlfriends was season two. And we watched it religiously Thursday or Wednesday night, you know, migrated. Um, so we had one TV in all of our houses at that time. So it dominated the TV at that time. And we watched it the whole way through and continued through college. And I remember actually being um, in college and people talk about watch parties. And I, uh, once I lived off campus, um, I always lived with good girlfriends, but when the show aired, I went into my bedroom and watched alone because I couldn't deal with people messing around and not paying attention or talking or drinking talking. during the show. Cause I was hyper-focused. Right. <laughs> so yeah. I love just love watching that. alone. That's yeah. That's great. Yeah. Like, you know, talking. So I, <laughs> yeah, um, the and then I guess the most unique thing that I can add three hours in is uh trying to say something that nobody hasn't heard already is that um living in wyoming we have huge winters and i had two babies in the winter mm. and um that's about when soap net started coming on and i will tell you when you're home alone in wyoming winters and you're on maternity leave this was like comfort food to me both oh, times no, right. and then i actually had a baby 10 years later just uh in 2020 i had a third daughter at the start of covid Oof. And um, once again, like not only watching 90210 again and the podcast, um, like has been awesome. 
Oh, so thanks, I've have always been a person that I love the show, but my brain, no matter what show it is, goes to the people in real life. And mm. so having this podcast has brought like another level because I get to see you all as real human beings and, and even the, the stars, you know, so yeah. that's been awesome. So thank you. It's great. To I will hear. say it's been well, fun you. too, as I rewatch episodes and, um, sometimes I hear, like, I'll hear a line of dialogue and I'm like, Oh, that's a Chuck. <laughs> or that's oh that's a Larry you know what I mean like you see the who wrote it and whatnot I hear I'm starting to hear like in like in um, when you watch Curb Your Enthusiasm right you start to think about Seinfeld and you're like oh that's a Larry David he wrote that joke because you know Larry David now from that show right so in some ways by doing this podcast I have moments where I'm like oh that's definitely a Chuck thing you know or that's a Larry thing or a Jessica Klein thing I hear your voices now sometimes um, okay, let's say hi to Liz. We're going to try to make that work. Hi. Yes. Hi, hi, Liz. Hi. Where are you, Liz? Where are you? In I'm in Denver, Colorado. Okay, great good. Great city, of Denver. great city. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, my story is, actually, I was like 12 or 13 when the show started, and so I think I was too young to really get into it, but my mom was watching it, and she had me watch it, and the very first episode that I saw was the Slumber Party one, and then I one. would watch it. Wow. And yeah. Classic. And my cool mom, mom huh? Yes. <laughs> and then I would watch it occasionally. And then I got hooked like that summer before they were seniors, like right. everybody else. And then I watched it religiously for years. Favorite character, Liz? Kelly was my favorite at that time. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about all around here? Uh, Stephanie just walked away because Andrew's yeah. favorite character. We know that Andrew's favorite character is Mick Jagger. I was going to say yeah. Mick or Keith. Oh, I was going to say Charlie. Yeah. 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 More appropriate, yeah. We'll get her on the way back. Yeah. Uh, bonus? <laughs> uh, Brandon. I mean, he was the uh, Brandon. He was the waiter. Oh, Brandon. Uh, of, uh, Brandon, he was the waiter at the Peach Pit. I mean, he, <laughs> he really... <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know who would love you should talk to is is Kelly Tata. You know, jo let's okay. give a shout out to Joey Tata. Joey Tata. Uh, yes, cheers to Joey to who Nat. made that peach pit. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 To Nat. I mean, no. I mean, also it's more it's more than that because I mean here here is um, a character and I mean a family. It's like a almost like a fish out of water tale. It's like he has to actually work like a real job. You know, a lot of the characters mm -hmm. on the show. I mean, uh, don't really have that. They have the they have the luxury of uh, doing whatever they want. And here is though this family that has to uh, work at the beach bit. Go ahead, Chuck. Well, that is exactly right, uh, Monis. And in Beverly Hills, growing up there in the late '60s, you know, the guy there was something called Chicken Delight. And if you ordered Chicken Delight here in Los Angeles, they were the first people who would actually deliver the chicken. And in, that wasn't, you know, there was no. Uh, DoorDash. I mean, this was the first thing. And the guys who worked for Chicken Delight, including Paul Diamond, Larry, uh, were guys who, who you know, needed a job. And, and so I always retained that and knew that Brandon had to be a working guy. He had to be separated from the ethos of, of Beverly Hills, or in this case, West Beverly Hills High School. Nice. Uh, Katie, favorite character? Mm -hmm. Uh, Luke Perry, nice. <laughs> Dylan. Mm. Me too. Me too. Well, Dylan. Katie, did you love him because he wrote the rodeo too? You're up in Wyoming. I mean, he he loved to do rodeo. You know, he That's did that movie question. Eight Seconds. Oh, question, Jeff. Oh, I know. Lane Frost. Lane Frost. He portrayed who. Who died in Wyoming? No, I my brother rode rodeo too, so that's actually my oh, brother and I great, watched eight great. seconds for yeah. the first time. But I loved I Kelly and I loved all the girls. Yeah. Cool. Okay, Crystal. Um, what what about you? Favorite character? <laughs> um, David for sure. Of course. Uh, and then Brenda. Nice. And Roberta, was it was it Jill Novick? Was that your favorite? <laughs> you better say that because she's probably watching. <laughs> of course. Um, actually, I loved Andrea, and nobody's talked about her. She was like the super smart, nerdy writer that became the cool girl. Um, so she was one of my favorites. I kind of her character kind of resonated with me. So yeah, very cool. Yeah. Um, you, is Stephanie going to come back, or is she done? Let me go. Let me come on, Steph. 
She, she <laughs> says it's <laughs> uh, Do any of you guys have questions for Charles and Larry that you want to know? I had a question. Go for it. Um, so were there ever any storylines that you wrote um, that you wanted to be in the show, but they said they couldn't be in the show? And if there are any, can you share that with us? Yes, I've talked about this on the podcast before. Uh, for me, it was the idea that in the first season, I wanted to have a character like Tanner. I wanted to have a Vietnam vet who was on the streets. And Duke Vincent asked me not to do that. So I waited. Uh, Duke Vincent was Mr. Spelling's partner. So I waited until season three where we made it part of the, the material, the, the homeless uh, vet, but he was an Iraqi soldier. So that was that was the one. And the real argument that we had um, content wise uh, really was over cigarettes. I thought there was a lot of my religion to do and a lot of social messaging I could have done very under you know the, the radar about having to do with the insidiousness of, of, of taking nicotine and putting it in your lungs me being an ex-smoker, of course, and and uh, they did not want to see Brenda Walsh with cigarettes. So that was the one area that we we, we couldn't find a, a middle ground. There was another area that came up later, and it's a subject that we never touched, and it's so Beverly Hills, Chuck, and you can almost guess it, everybody. I'm talking about plastic surgery. Mm. Really? I'm oh, Larry, I'm surgery. so sorry they didn't let you I'm go I'm talking there. plastic surgery, okay? Oh my! No, yeah. no, how could we do a series ten years of in Beverly Hills and there's no plastic surgery? Coincidence? <laughs> what was the story? Terry, the story you you remember the story? Do you remember the story? Uh, we kidded about it. I, I think we broke it the ground at one point, and and, and and it just got shot down right away. We just felt that people would be uncomfortable because there was a lot of plastic surgery going on, so we didn't want to point well, to I that. Didn't, right, didn't in know. Cast. <laughs> right in our cast. Right in our cast. It's pretty no. interesting. Oh. There's nothing more Beverly Hills than plastic surgery. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Maggie... There's nothing more Jackson Hole than plastic surgery. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, there you go. I thought you were going to say there's nothing more Jackson Hole than orthopedic surgery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that too. I've that been too. on your Lots of skiing injuries. Yes, yes. Uh, you have your orthopedic on the on the yeah. Our are friend wrong. Maggie <laughs> says Liz looks like Emily Valentine a little. Have you ever gotten <laughs> No, never. What can yeah, I? Don't, I actually don't see that at all. So let's uh, well, take that you... one, Maggie, and send it back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I think this group is good. Yes. Yeah. It's been really yeah. I think we're good. We're uh, to move on to what is it? Far we West. We have Far oh, West right. next, and we're Goodbye, a little ahead of schedule. Andrew. Thank you so much, Andrew. 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 I'll see Thank you. you. I will see you in Zion next day, Brian. Okay. Bye, All right, I'll be here. Far West. Bye, Steve's plane is coming in from Hawaii right about now. Mom, this is Beverly Hills. You got to be a little glamorous. Well, where are you? I'm in San Francisco. Let's go to Idaho. Welcome to Portland. <gasps> Okay, and here is it our Angel. Well, that's great. Angel Fall. Cool. I want Angel Twin Fall. Well, well hello, hello, everybody. Aloha. Well, this is my last toast. Okay. And it was really a toss up whether it was going to be a oh, Whip City. I love that. The I can't get that in LA. I may have raised that. It's good beer. But I did longboard because even though I'm a Californian and, uh, you know, come on, I, I worked in Hawaii. I lived in Hawaii. I love Hawaii. So cheers. Cheers. The Cheers. Cheers. The West Coast, okay. best coast. Here we are. Yeah. Best coast. And my friend Elisa Tong is here with us. It's good to see you, Elisa. It's always so sorry easy. for the drama, Pete. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Elisa a little drama. I did. I brought it all tonight for you, though. Yep. Yeah. Is that, a, is that a live one? Is that a real no, plenary? No, it's not. Unfortunately, I, so. I now live on the East Coast. So this yeah. is my, this is my ginger. And, Ken, okay. and Kendra from Oregon. And where's Washington? We have no Washington. Julia yet. Ban, we are looking for you. Yes. She's probably Ban, trying to figure out how the internet is. Yes, Julia I'm actually Ban, trying to Julia Ban, the one I know. Have. Where the hell are you, Julia? I know. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm trying to figure out. Julia should be here. She okay, should be. I'm on it. I'm, I'm hey, Lisa. Lisa we got Lisa. Good to see you. You know, there was a question of. 
you know, did you have to be anyone who's never been on the show before? And there was a lot of, of controversy, but you know, oh, hey, is that so? was, stage was controversy? Lisa controversy. There was wow. Lisa. I wasn't going to do this without knowing that someone else who loved the Dodgers would have to miss some of the game to be on the I show. Know. <laughs> I, I knew I would be getting updates from Chuck. So okay, I don't have any. Still one nothing as far as I'm concerned. Oh, Chuck, no. I have that thing for your sister. Is that is that okay to play right now? Do it right now. I hope she's on, but she may have left. Carol, we'll try it your anyway. sister, Carol. Yes. Hey, this is Jennifer Grant. I'm Celeste. And I just wanted to give a shout out to Carol. Carol, how are you? You amazing fan. Um, and a shout out to all fans of 90210 for Hello? all these years. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it's done really great things for your heart and made you laugh and smile and given you just good times. I love 90210. So have a great day, you all. Thank you. Now that's the we love, And we love Jennifer Grant, I but you notice that she did a shout out to Carol, but I look across, I see Angela, Elisa, Lisa, Kendra. There's no Carol here. The only Carol I know is my sister Carol, who listens so we, to this we, podcast and, like my parents, was a real fan of the of the show and the fact that the little brother got to, uh, you know, make something of his life and uh, you know not be the reprobate that everyone expected me to be. And so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the fact is, I love my sister, and she's Carol Mushin. She's here in Venice Beach, in Marina Del Rey, near Larry. Hello, Carol. This one's for you. Okay, oh, but also and there's back. this. Hey, this is Jennifer Grant, Celeste, and I wanted to do a shout-out to Lisa. Lisa, thank you for being such an amazing fan. And to all the 90210 fans, thank you for sticking with us for all of these years. I hope we've brought you lots of laughs and joy and good times. Thank you. And, uh, oh, thank you, Jennifer. There it is. You're beautiful. She's a sweetheart. Okay, let's yes. let's start. Well, I'm going to start with Alisa today because you've got some story. You you know you're in Hawaii or you were in Hawaii watching 90210 and you told me you have an Ian Ziering story. So. I do, but let me just reverse a little bit because I've been watching this. Okay. Showcase of America. That's right. Um, it was very interesting for me to feel because I felt like I was an odd person growing up because my parents also didn't let me watch this show. So somehow it got onto the radar of my sister who's always knew the cool stuff that was going on. And we we did we did sneak and watch it just like uh, your friend from Oklahoma. Um, and it was so interesting because the zip code also started with a nine, like our zip codes in Hawaii. Um, and in that way, I felt like, oh, this is kind of, we're close to this, but the culture of a Beverly Hills high school is very different from a Hawaii um, high school. Where cultural you in Honolulu, or where, where were you? I grew up on Maui. Oh, no. Nice. Okay. Yeah, because so, I don't know nice. how much. West Beverly and Punahou, I think, may have had some things in common. Yeah, maybe. I I went to the Punahou of Maui, um, and my oh, father yeah. graduated from Punahou with Barack Obama. Oh, um, oh. But anyway, so I developed um, a liking for bad boy, Dylan McKay, my sister, oh, had the crush on the good one, Brandon. And I feel like that carried us through our lives of a type <laughs> of type that we're attracted to. Mm, um, relatable. And... I personally uh, didn't have feelings or feel a connection to um, Ian Ziering's character, but 90210 was such a big deal, um, and in Hawaii, the year that I graduated, 1994, we were, a bunch of friends and I were at the Westin um, in Ka'anapali, and it had started to circulate that Ian Ziering was on vacation and he was laying out by the pool at the hotel. And so, you know, we're walking by and we see him laying out, sunning by himself, and people were crazy. Like, this is before cell phones. This is, you know, you'd have to bring a real camera out. Sure. They were putting, they were like, he was napping. Okay, he was napping. <laughs> 
And they were like, parents were pushing their kids to go stand next to him. And, they were, <laughs> and I was like, what is going on? This is like, I didn't understand that need to be so close or to have that souvenir. Anyway, an hour or so passes by and he's up and he's walking around. And I was with some of my other high school graduating friends. And one of them was an early developer. So she, and she was in a bikini. She, you know, upper body, yes. body pride. Yes. That's Larry's, that's Larry, upper body pride. Upper body pride, upper body pride. She was, yeah. she, whenever she introduced herself to him, he was so polite, especially considering everything that was going on, disrupting him. And um, I remember she went in her bikini, like, can I get a hug? And, he said, no, I'm good. Like, it's wow. nice to meet you. And now, I mean, at the time it was devastating, okay, to the teenagers were like, why doesn't he wanna hug us? And you know, like all this kind of stuff. But now that I'm this age and, you know, after this Me Too movement and all these yeah. things kind of coming up, good for him. Like he could have done whatever he wanted. Everybody would, would do anything for him. And he very calmly and with grace, got himself out of that situation. And I wanted to share that story with nice. all these fans tonight that he's not a creep. So there you go. I am someone thinks you're not a creep. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> that one time that he did that. Nice In 1994. Yep. <laughs> he's a great guy. We love Ian here at the show. Um, okay, let's move along to um, and I and I just love love Elisa. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you taking your time. I know this is normally your. Best Thank time. you for inviting me. I love no. everything that you guys do, and it's such a pleasure to be with Larry and Grandpa Charlie here today. <laughs> and like, You're wonderful. So Kudos to you. Thank you. All right, Lisa from Torrance, uh, let's hear your your 90210 love and story. We practiced this on Zoom a couple of times, right? Yes, we had a rehearsal. Let's see how it goes. That's right. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I started watching 90210 in the fourth grade, and I would journal about it with my teacher. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we would have journals, and I would, like, talk to the teacher about it. I'm like, hey, have you watched the new episode? I mean, that's where it was, so... Then it moved on to middle school and high school, and I would just watch it on repeat pretty much constantly, mm. especially the past 20 years living in Torrance. I was just continuously watching it over and over. It just, just love the show. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I mean, and you've, just, you've, listen, you've done a lot of things. You visited it. You went to the, you know, you yeah, went to, we know you're, yes. You're yes. Uh, then in 2019, Brian had his podcast. So at Torrance High, I met all the fans, and that was, pretty amazing too now i'm friends with all of them so it's nice to see how it came just full circle you know just having my own group of friends now with you know oh mm -hmm. charles yes well what i love i just want to say this you know we met we met you through patreon larry and i we were at fan mm -hmm. fest but didn't meet you that night i, I don't know. think but no, no. what was great is that here we are we're doing meeting all the fans and we're there's lisa and behind her is a really impressive bookcase with a lot of books Oh, and I love like, reading. And I'm, you know, I'm a little, I'm a nerd myself. Larry's got nerd qualities. And it was like, right. who's this woman with all this, these books? And, <laughs> and you are professional in, in yes. that. But that was great yes. to know that a 902 fan did something, read a book as, as well as watched our show. So oh, yeah. No. <laughs> no, I love to read. I love to read. Yeah. No, it's, I'm, yeah. Lisa, I'm curious thing. to ask you, um, You've made a lot of friends through this experience of 90210. Um, yes. Probably lifelong friends. Yeah. Uh, what has that been like for you? It's you know, been a, yeah, it's been great. I mean, I feel like I've been in touch with them like almost every day. I got Maggie and Leanne and just Mel, everybody. It's just been a lot of fun. Just get going back and forth and talking about the show with them. Um, even just even friends before that, I would just. We would have watch parties, like Melanie said. We just love having friends over, and we just watch it. And I don't know, mm. just yeah, a lot of fun. Very cool. Let's yeah. move along to our other friend, Julia Ban. I don't think Julia's been on the show yet, has she, guys? No. Nope, no, just in the after darks, I think, picture, right, Julia? Picture. Yeah. Now, yeah. Julia, I know you're a big fan, and, and we had a buddy on here earlier today. 
Um, and you're from Washington. Yes. And so know. is he. Alexa, play the Beverly Hills 90210 theme song. Here's Beverly Hills 90210 theme, Sensacion de Vivir, 90, by the Starlight Orchestra on Amazon Music. <laughs> hey, what's up? It's your boy, Ryan Thomas Brown, a.k.a. Morton Muntz. Wanted to give a huge shout out to Julia Ben, the fan from Washington State, Julia, it's people like you that keep the memory of this show rolling and rolling and rolling. And I tell you what, we got fans from every state representing today on America's Zip Code on the Beverly Hills 90210 show. Brought to you by Pete, Larry, and Chuck. And you bet your bippy, I'm going to be there too. <laughs> Love that. Love months so much. Um, okay, Julia, why don't you tell us your uh, 90210 uh, story? Okay, well, I was 10 years old, um, and it's, it was it's my favorite show of all time, um, and I would watch it with my sisters. I have two sisters, um, and my favorite, um, my favorite character was Brenda. And I also like Brandon. Mm. Um, and my favorite couple was, uh, I kind of have a tie. Brandon, Dylan, and Kelly and Brandon. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I like that. Yeah. Kendra from Oregon. How are Kendra? you? Kendra? Where are you? Where are you in Oregon? Where are you? So right now I'm in Bend. I'm in Central Oregon. Sure. But I grew up outside of Portland, so I'm kind of representing all of Oregon right now. Nice. That's it. Nice. Yeah, all right. The donut, the donut shop in Oregon. What is that donut shop that we all have talked about? Right? <laughs> voodoo Donut in downtown voodoo. Portland. Oh, voodoo. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. How, what, tell us your 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 story of nine hundred two and So I was ten. Also, um, I came out in nineteen ninety. Um, I was allowed to watch it um, with a parent or grandparent um, <laughs> when uh, I was not allowed to watch Melrose Place. That was that came on at nine. I could only watch the one at eight. Um, and I sat with uh, either my mom or my grandma and probably my dad a few times and 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 watched it. It was I don't think there's a person who has ever met me who doesn't know that 90210 is a major part of my life and, and mm -hmm. always has been. And I think that for me, at least I was, I was young. And so I think that that's probably the parental control thing, but I, I was young, but the different um, stories that you guys dealt with. And I know that earlier, um, you know, three hours ago, you guys have already talked three about and a half this. hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've already talked about this, but the, you know, the different scenarios, the different sort of, teenage situations that you put the girls, the guys, the group, whatever it may be in. Someone growing up in Oregon, yes, we were close to California, but we were in LA. I mean, we didn't know, you know, we saw the beautiful California. Right. Right. Yeah, we would visit, but you know, I, I was from a rural part of Oregon. I mean, that didn't exist. People with, you know, Beamers and Porsches and stuff didn't exist, but, but those problems did. And so I think that because you guys were able to tackle them and show us sort of the younger age, what could happen and what could be talked about, how you dealt with it, perhaps even showing a parent that, you know, this might happen and your kids might be able to come to you with this. I think that it dealt with situations that still to this day, I, I, somebody else mentioned about, it was sort of like having older siblings mm -hmm. ahead of you sort of in, in high school. That's kind of how I felt in grade school and then into middle school and middle school to high school and then into college. And, um, I was actually in college when it um, when they were also in college, and and when it, it stopped airing. So I watched for all ten seasons. I watched. I have VHSs of it. I watched it. I think it was Thursday at eight o'clock, I believe, because my rose was on at nine, and that was a no go. Um, but it was it was a wonderful <laughs> time, and it was put together so great. And 
And I think that the people are so genuine. Um, I see, you know, I mean, sitting here and, and having Chuck. Yes, Chuck. <laughs> I just have a question. Did your, what did your grandparents think about this? I may be Grandpa Charlie now. You know? oh, That's right. My grandmother, who has since passed away, but my, my grandmother loved herself some Dylan McKay. Uh -huh. And it was, yes. and it was so funny. But she also, she was, she was, she was a Brandon fan. She was a very wholesome fan, but I, I think she really liked sort of the surfer the boy, Dylan yeah. kind of guy. Mm. Oh, she loved it. She was all about the 90210. She was, that it was her great. thing too. Love that. <laughs> uh, let's say hi to Angela from Twin Angela. Falls, uh, uh, Idaho. Yeah. Wow. Hi, hi, Angela. Woo. Hi. Yeah, Why a few problems. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's your 90210 story how did you get watching it all that stuff um well pretty much this is in memory and dedication to my sister denise who we lost her life when i was 10 years old as she was saving mine and i would walk in her room and it'd be full of beverly hills now to and oh kids on the block we watch the show all the time and stuff and so like i watched it with her a little bit and then a lot more after I lost her, and this is just something I've waited for like most of my life. And stuff was something like this. Was, yeah, mm. pretty exciting. So I love everything about the show. There's not a thing I can complain or argue about. And it's just the whole thing is amazing. So thank you for this. Yeah, of and course. Thank you. Um, well, thank you so much. You know, sorry about your sister, of course. You know, we. How old were you? We're going there. I was gonna say, how old were you when you started watching? Oh, I was about eight or nine, but watched watching like consistently, like you know, 10, 11 years old, whenever I can find it or anything like that. And now it's basically on constant show 24-7 on Hulu or wherever <laughs> I get the chance. And stuff. Oh, keep so. watching, you know, every time that you just just go to the show, leave it on, <laughs> and go on for 24 hours. And Larry and I, and then come back oh, to us, and we will buy you a nice dinner. I promise. Exactly. You. Keep streaming. Keep and streaming. Larry, you know, Larry is the, yeah. Larry is the I, last of the of the high rollers, so we're going to be really good. It'll be good dinner. <laughs> Don't worry, we will. We're going to. We're going to watch it over and over. I think over. I can't go any further than two weeks. <laughs> uh, Angela, Angela, was there a favorite? Yeah, character? So. Did you guys have a favorite character? Cool. Did you? Did you and your sister have a favorite character or anything like that? Or Did you hear that, Angela? Um, that was for you. Yeah. Did you have a favorite character? I think hers was a good mixed variety with mine. I love them all, but if I had to pick one, it's got to be Nat. Oh, yeah. Aww. I said I like Nat? them all, but like, yeah. Nat? I like oh, them all, yeah. but if I had to choose just one, I would have to say Nat. Because he's oh, like the godfather great. of them all, just kind of helps them all out. It's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Aww. Uh, Aww. Yeah. Kelly, so shout out to Kelly to and Joe, by the way. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So. Kelly, we, we love that. Yeah. We love Kelly Tata here, yeah. and we love. Uh, and and, and love nobody him. made a better mega burger than Joey Tata. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Really cool. That's right. This has been great, guys. All right, we're, are we ready to wrap this group and then uh, sort of move on to the four of us and wrap up the end of the show? I Chuck, guess yeah. it is. Well, thank you so much, West Coast, Best Coast, um, West Coast, Best, Best Coast, Coast. Best, <laughs> Best in the West. And, and I, Alisa, I know we include you, even though you don't have any ocean. I just want you Ali, to know. for my friend well. Elisa in New Jersey. I don't know. Did you get one of these yet? This oh is my what? God. <laughs> you and the shirt. You, you, I, I need that. I feel I like you would love a shirt like that. You know I, what would. I, mean? I would. Yeah. I would. I'm gonna. Will you send me the link to? Is I that the link you. that you sent out, Melanie? Uh, it should be on the email. It's also Beverly Hills 90210 showshop.com. Okay, well, I know where I'm going to be going now. So, okay, so now Larry has a shirt and Pete has a shirt, but uh, somebody else. Chuck, we're working on the shirt. Uh, I, you know, I, I think the shirt should be Chuck, uh, everybody dance now. I think, you know, a little. Everybody have... dance now. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye to Lisa, Perfect. Kendra, Angela, Julia. We're going to win it for you guys. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye, Bye guys. guys. Bye. Well, well, well. When was the last time you checked out the Beverly Hills 90210 Show Shop? Because now it's loaded with so much more stuff. 
Did you ever want to join the gang at CU? Because now you can wear your official CU t-shirt! Or want to get into the fun with America zip code? Represent with this cool swag! Or maybe you have an invite to the Peach Pit after dark and need the coolest shirt ever! We have loaded the store with so much more! So don't be a squeeze! Head over to Beverly Hills 90210 Showshop.com for all the latest goods. Okay, guys, this has been epic. Uh, epic. 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 I agree. The good word. Epic cross country trip without leaving the zip code. Oh, yeah. I love that. Now, Larry. now, what do we have to conclude? The fact that Alabama and Mississippi didn't show up. I just want to know. <laughs> Uh, what does well, that mean? I think just, Diana Low was in it w did live briefly in Alabama, Mississippi, so she was going to cover those areas too. Oh, but I see. So she I, was I think whole, it means I think it means local. basically that Fox didn't have the didn't have any penetration in those. Have areas any penetration there? No, it was uh, you know. So we always lived with that. You know, people were we were never in the we were always in the top ten nationally in Los Angeles. But it, once that we came in for the second season, but we never were, very rarely were nationally because Fox didn't have any stations in those places. Yeah. You know, we I never know how much we would have been if we would have been just had a normal saturation. Uh, but couple this things. This has been great. This has been this great. great. Amazing. Wow, it's Larry. Just amazing. Yeah. So, so a couple things stories. real quick I want to plug away at. Yeah. Um, this is fans. the Festival of Fans, right, Larry? And it's so exciting that we have that. Now, uh, this was America zip code, which was four to seven. We blew right through that. Man. Um, this is I knew we couldn't do it in three hours. There was just yeah. too many. Too yeah. many too guest country. stars. Too Hustle many. Mania. Too yeah. big a Shout country. outs, uh, you know. And then on the 13th, we're going to re-watch the Super Show or portions of that. That's the secrets of the Super Show. We're and looking for that. Secret. And we, we have Story it. Slam. Yeah. That's going to be epic. I, I mean, can't we gotta, wait. we got to get some designs for that going now, Pete. I meant to yeah. mention to you. We've got to get some, get some thinking design. happening. I guess, I guess okay, we we'll have to Zoom tomorrow, 7 a.m. at California time. That's how much Woo! we work for this show. And, yes, I have drunk from... <laughs> Uh, Samuel Adams, Rolling Rock. I got the Texas one here. I got Colorado. I got my booze here from Kentucky. Oh I got my longboard. <laughs> I'm fucked up, everybody. This is funny. <laughs> <God. laughs> I got to tell you. I got to tell you. I don't know. Love that. Uh, one more thing. I'm going to be launching a second podcast soon. Do you guys oh, know this? I, I, <laughs> yes. I heard something it's about it. It's called this. Guest Star. It's coming soon. You can follow the Instagram Guest Star Show, and I'm going to be interviewing guest stars from all different shows. If you guys would do me a favor and follow Guest Star Show on Instagram, I'd I will do that. And yeah, tell yeah, me who your favorite guest stars are. Because That's right. You would want to know. You'll get them. And much, you know, like I said last year, I know much gratitude. I'm all about gratitude these days. Charles and Larry, I never thought we would do two super shows, but here we are in the, in the second. You never thought we'd do two super shows. <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to I leave after one. the last I'm, one. I'm I'm <laughs> I can't wait to talk about that, though. Putting that together was some of the most fun I've had doing this. And this much love Absolutely. to both of you and to Karen. And to Jessica, and I got to hang out with Larry and his wife. Uh, my wife and I did. We went oh, and saw yeah. some music. That was so much fun. And just getting to know you guys has been an absolute trip. Dodger Stadium. And, and by the way, yes, speaking Dodger of Dodger Stadium, Stadium the Dodgers tied it up 1 1. Thank you, Justin. Yeah, 1 1. So right. We're out of here. I'm going to get to watch the game. So, yeah, thank, bottom of the yeah, So, everybody who's looked to 902 and 0 for life lessons, you can have your cake and eat it too. There you go. Mm, and that. and very lastly, uh, to Melanie Rose, thank you so much for everything. This show thank you. And, and, and also, again, again, thank you to Todd, Todd for the editing Thanks. and for Brian Orman for the, uh, the original theme music. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I don't know great. if you saw Elisa's comment in the chat there, Melanie. Melanie Rose, thank you for all you did to organize all the moving pieces of this nationwide show tonight. Aww. It really does. And I don't. That, your ability. Right. And I don't of, know who said uh, you have such a beautiful smile, but you do. You do oh, have a thanks, beautiful guys. <laughs> and oh, just I really you. appreciate everything that you do here. So uh much love to you, Melanie Rose. We can't well do this thank you. Time. And you're the host with the most, Pete. So most we can't do it without people. you either. So thank you so much right. for that. Much appreciate right. okay. much love, ready. guys. It's time yes. for some Dodger baseball. Thank uh, you. See you next week, guys. <laughs> we will see, see you next week. week. See you for the super show.